the meeting to order. Um, first, we're going to do additions or changes to the agenda. Does anybody have any? Okay, well, I have a couple. Um, we've received um, from the Central Vermont Regional Planning, no, from the Department of Public Safety, an addendum to the Kent Hill scoping contract, which we've already signed. You'll remember that. Um, what this does, apparently in the last one, it um, said that we could pay salaries, but it's, this is an amendment that says now we can pay contractors because it's quite possible we'll want to use outside contractors. So that's all it does. It doesn't change anything else. Um, so I want to uh, take a motion to sign that. Um, we may have some things on Curtis Pond Dam. We may have a vote. Yeah. on about um, the, uh, refusing the bids. And we'll get to that when we get to Jamie's um, report. And I, an a, a addition to executive session tomorrow night at the end of the meeting, in addition to talking about what's listed there, we're going to talk about a personnel issue, which I'm not going to announce. <laughs> Okay, so we'll also go into executive session under 313A1B. All right. And with that, um, has everybody met Kari by now? So we, Now that I've met Rose, I, I think met I know everybody. One minute ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so I'll just say hi, everybody. I'm very excited to be here. I, I, if you don't know, I, I'm from Calus. I, I'm a graduate of Calus Elementary and E32. And, after living um, other places for many years, moved back to Calus in 2019. So I'm very excited to be here contributing to the town and particularly helping with this new role, um, which it, I think I've talked to most of you about this, but probably the most frequent question is, what is your new job? And there's quite a list, um, roads, uh, responsibility for Could the- Why don't you put the flow chart up? And... Oh, yeah. I'll let you do, do that. that, okay? Kari's gonna introduce himself. So this is a uh, organizational chart that Ann put together and basically shows that the voters elect the listeners, the select board, and the town clerk. And the select board is responsible for most of the staff, paid and unpaid. And they have created this town administrator job to help with all of the paid functions. And so that includes the highway department. Um, we are in the process of hoping, hopefully uh, hiring a full-time road foreman that will help with the daily operations. We have other paid staff um, um, that are sort of very part-time and seasonal, I believe. We have this um, Barbara's position of assistant town administrator, which she also serves as the assistant town clerk. And then we have the treasurer function, uh, which includes uh, Barbara as the assistant treasurer. And one of the things that I need to do right off the bat is help get trained in what the tre treasurer functions are and then evaluate what is going to be the new model going forward. We don't necessarily need a full-time treasurer, um, but that's something to be determined. So, um, so um, helping the select board administer the town business is really the nature of the job. And, um, and also, you know, I've, I've worked for a board, I've worked on boards. I, um, I take particular pride in helping the board do a good job in its decision making. So um, helping with agenda planning, research, making a recommendation if that's appropriate, and, and uh, um, carrying out what they decide. So anyway, very happy to be here and hope to um, uh, have yeah, a I'll fruitful say, career. <laughs> Kari's been on board for two weeks and my sh sh shoulders feel lighter already. That's <laughs> <laughs> terrific. Having welcome Kari. Again, again welcome, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, and and in case you don't know, in Kari's last job, he administered a budget considerably bigger than Callis's budget. He um, had to work with a constituency considerably bigger than the constituency of Callis. And uh, there was one other thing that's very good. Oh, he uh, he managed um, employees, <laughs> a lot more employees than we have in Callis. So I can't believe our luck and getting somebody as experienced as Kari to help us with this. Lucky. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, has everybody had a chance to look at the... Thank you, Kari. Does, every, oh, does anybody want to ask Kari any questions? Let me... 
they <coughs> allow that. Okay. Can I just say one thing? I really enjoyed working with your wife, Gabrielle, oh, so very, yeah, very yeah. much. And yeah. I really was saddened to know that she had to leave the board. But I'm sure... She was uh, saddened, too. She really appreciated uh, Please send her my best regards, because I truly enjoyed working with her. Okay. You haven't seen the last one. Yeah. <laughs> and can I add that we had four meet and greet events for town over the last couple of weeks, and they went really well. People were so receptive and interested, and mostly just wanted to know where does he fit, where does town administrator fit in, and so the purpose of the, the org chart, and they, they, he was just very well received. So we want to thank you, Kari, for stepping up. Yeah, my pleasure. All right, has everybody had a chance to look at the minutes? Any changes? If so, I'll take a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Uh, board orders. Do we have a board packet? Ask your new town administrator. So, so I do have it. Uh, one of the things that was um, suggested to me right off the bat is: is there a different way to do board orders? The challenge being. I, I believe to look at all the invoices while you're trying to conduct a meeting. Mm -hmm. So I suggested that we try a new format whereby we, we share with you the ahead of time the summary report so you can see the vendor and the size of the invoice and dates and that sort of thing. Um, and then if you have specific questions, I will bring the entire packet with all the invoices to the meeting and you, you can look at them for the meeting during whenever you would like and then Asked to take a vote. And I, and I have reviewed these and I'm recommending that you approve them. Um, but um, however it works best for you, this is this is the system that we use on the school board this year. Any discussion about that process? Would you like to try it? Anybody? I think it makes sense. It um, was helpful for me to see the broad uh, strokes of it ahead of time and then know if I have questions. It's always seemed awkward. We have to technically sign them during the meeting and it's really hard to effectively read them while also being in the meeting. So I think this is a uh, good path forward. I did ask other towns what they do um, and there were a lot of them who said they scan them 24, 48, 72 hours ahead of time so that everybody can see it online or that they just make sure they're ready the Thursday before and everybody tries to stop by ahead of time. Those are kind of the two most common do, ways. Do they scan just this or do they scan the whole packet? They didn't clarify what that mm -hmm. was because that was the question that I was wondering about. But it was it was a poll I put out on a listserv, so I got a bunch of different sort of answers okay. back. Okay. Um, and then some of them just said, yeah, we all show up half an hour before the meeting to make sure we have time to review it. So those were kind of the big three of the answers. That I and, and others said they do, the select board does it at the very end of their meeting. Yeah. And, and basically by that time, the audience has left, <laughs> and then they just sit and do it. But good golly, at 9.30 at night, yeah. yeah. no, it's too tired. Yeah. yeah. Other comments? I'm a creature of habit, but as I said, okay. you know, obviously it seems more logical to do it that way. I'm just accustomed to doing it the other way. And <laughs> I'm happy to have you review these, whenever is convenient for you. So, Curry, usually we have four or five of these things to sign. Right, I, I, I don't know what the story with that is. I, I okay. asked Sandra and I haven't heard back. My, I, I thought she said when we were reviewing um, payroll last week that she combines payroll board orders into once per month. Is that not accurate? I don't think so. I think okay. we get them every By meeting. Week. And yeah. usually there's a bunch and of... Usually there's <coughs> four signature pages. Or yeah, and so. are they not in that packet? There's no, just, one? just the one. I didn't do payroll last two weeks since I was not in the office. Mm -hmm. Um, Sandra and Barbara work together to do these parts, so Sandra is the one who put together your packets. I don't know. I did it the way she, I was taught, but I don't know if he does it in a different way. So that might explain okay. it. Well, that's fine. So this is the only one we have to sign. Does anybody will have any questions about this sheet that they want to ask Kari about or anything they want to look at? Okay. Let's pass that around and we're all set. Um, Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, as as you all know, we would. Uh, Kari's got a lot to learn right now, and the roads are huge, 
And um, we've been talking with Toby about being uh, assistant road commissioner for a while, interim assistant road commissioner. He would do it, um, he would sort of change his title from highway grants administrator and he would do it uh, under the same stipend that he's doing it currently, the Highway Grants Administrator, and he would take on the job of training and helping Kari until such time as Kari's ready to let him go, and that's fine with Toby. It yeah. could be a few months, it could be a year, we don't know yet. What it's that is really appreciated. That the road, all and all that encompasses, the road system, is the most daunting part of this job, and Toby is, from what I can tell, he's got the big picture on the road. We set up a regular meeting time. So, um, any discussion on that? Well, I wonder if we should be compensating him when his stipend is, what, like $25 an hour? Well, it depends on how many hours. It's just a stipend. Okay. He thinks he can do it in the amount of time he's been doing it, because Kari will be doing some of it, too. It's, it's not like he's going to take on the whole job that you do. Um, so there's a oh, signature here, I can take that, yeah. Oh, where are we signing? Right here. Oh, we're signing up, so I sign it too. Oh. <laughs> okay, got it. Open <laughs> it up. Okay. So does that sound? I mean, if he's um, amenable with it, so he can continue doing the grant work, and, the, and this would still be a 20-hour. It would be whatever it is, but he's not asking for more money. He's not asking for an hourly wage. He's just asking for okay. a st stipend, and he's not asking for an increase. Okay. It just it sounds like it's considerably, if he was doing approximately 20 hours of grant management, and now that and helping Kari learn. Yeah, winter's coming, and I guess there's not so much grant work right now. So he thinks he can. he's fine. Okay. Yeah. And I'm not going to need a tremendous amount of his time. I think an hour a week would be a lot. And you'd be able to provide oversight down at that. Yeah, and I'll okay. pick up some of the things he's been doing. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? Then I take a motion to appoint Toby. So moved. Second. May I ask for clarification? <clears throat> um, in the agenda, it was assistant road commissioner, but I've also heard you say tonight interim assistant road commissioner. Yes, to appoint Toby, I should have said that. Uh, interim assistant road commissioner. Okay, thank you, Barbara. <laughs> I wrote it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so the motion is to appoint Toby as interim assistant road commissioner until such time as Kari feels ready to. Um, handle everything by himself. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, and it's also come to my attention that we have no right, we pay about half the um, Woodbury Fire Department budget, including, and Scott and Charlotte are the ones who brought this to my attention, including the, um, the new um, station. And yet, we do not go to their meetings and we have no say in their, therefore, we have no say in their budget development. Uh, oh. So I'm from the Woodbury Fire Department. I'm the president, James Daly. Mm -hmm. uh, you do not pay half of our budget. You do not pay oh. for the new building either. But we're paying for, okay, t t help me out there. You pay yeah. for our operating costs yeah. um, and our capital replacement fund which goes toward large purchases such as trucks, uh, air packs, any large equipment purchases basically. Uh, and then our truck uh, replacement fund, which is just to cover two payments that we currently have on two loans of trucks. And we're not paying for any of the new station? You are. Oh, okay, I beg your pardon, I'm misinformed. So, but you. Sorry. what I would, what I was going to, where I was going with this yeah. is, it seems to me we should have somebody attending your meetings and just participating and understanding what you're doing and reporting back to us. Not a problem. We have our business, our monthly business meetings, the first Tuesday of every month at six thirty. Okay, great. Um, and in that case, I would like to suggest John McCullough has yes, John. Planning Commission, the first Tuesday of every month. Oops. Mm. Rats. <laughs> Rats. <laughs> uh, well, I, I am a uh, member of the town of Callis. I'm 
happy to come to a select board meeting every month and uh, or come to every select board meeting and answer questions or give you guys a report however if that works better for the town um, we just felt that it would be good to have a rep somebody a taxpayer of callus um, on the board just tracking it from the point of view of Callis' interests. Well, he's, that's what he's saying. He I, I understand. Yes. Okay. I understand. Uh, a non-biased okay. So I, I completely understand. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. That sounds like a plan. I don't think you'll need to come every month, but no, if you just fine. check in every once in a while. Yep. We are really grateful you don't want us to pay half of your building. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In uh, fact, you're on the agenda, so when we get there, we can talk a little more about that. Yeah, of course. Do you guys want to ask any questions at this point? Is there somebody else? Are, are the meetings generally open? Like, if one of us happened to yep. be free on a first Tuesday, we can they are completely open to the public. Where do you meet? Uh, at the Woodbury Town Hall. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm wondering, do you send out a monthly reminder and an agenda in advance and so forth? Yes, we do. We send out our treasurer's report, uh, roughly a, our treasurer's report and agenda roughly a week prior to the monthly business meeting. Okay, so would you like for him to add? Yes, please. So if you would add our select board to it, let me give you their email address. It's simply selectboard at callisvermont.com. Perfect. I believe I have it saved already. Okay, great. Communications with you, Barb. <coughs> That, that would That'd be really helpful. That would, yeah. <coughs> that's a good solution. Thank yeah. you, um, James. Yeah. Okay, I'll take a motion. We'll come back to this in a minute, but I'll, I'll take a motion to sign the um, Kent Hill scoping project at Endem. Do we all or do we No, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, to authorize one of us to sign it. <laughs> I move to authorize Winchester to sign it on our behalf. <coughs> uh, second. All in favor? Aye. And uh, unless we're talking about it later, uh, I think do we have a site visit uh, scheduled for Wednesday morning? Is that right at 9? Yeah. Ten. That's right. 10. Is it 10? Nine. 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 Yeah. Um, so I, I've set aside time to attend that. Um, I just wanted to make sure anybody else who wanted to go to, so it doesn't turn into a, a <coughs> one meeting situation. Is anybody else planning? I can't, so. I was planning to attend. Um, do you want to go, Jamie? I could, but I don't feel. Okay, it's you and me, Jamie. I think you two are fine. I think Toby said he'd be there, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. Yeah. I'll be there. Okay. <coughs> no, well, he's worried about the three <coughs> select board members. Right. Yeah, okay. I'm okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Mm. Yes, Rose. I didn't catch what you were talking about. Um, this is the, I spoke about this when I added it to the agenda. This is an addendum to the Kent Hills, to the Kent Hill scoping project, which enables us to work with contractors instead of just people who sell. <coughs> okay. Can I look at it and just put the right names in here? Or, uh, uh, I don't it's, think it's you'll ERC. It's, well, this is actually with the Department of Public Safety. Okay. It's a contract with the Department of Sub Public Safety to do the Kent Hill scoping project that we've talked about in the past and approved. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's an addendum to enable, which will enable us to use contractors and not just <coughs> salaried, as opposed to just salaried people. Thank you. Okay. Um, public comment. Anybody wish to speak? Okay. In that case, uh, Kelly. Oh, you skipped the last bullet. Not yeah, real. Oh, it's you know what the bullet didn't print out on mine. That's right. Oh yes, a sad, a sad one. We're going to uh, uh, Gabrielle. Of course, has tendered her resignation. She did that on the same day that Kari signed the contract, and I guess we have to officially accept Gabrielle's resignation. I don't know if 
we have to I vote to do, to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so would somebody like to move to accept Gabrielle's resignation? So moved. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Um, and now Gabrielle was our administrator and she was one of the liaisons to the Curtis Pond Dam. So um, Kari will pick up ARPA administrator duties and Jamie will be fine. But uh, I think on her own, unless somebody would like to join Jamie as liaison to Curtis Pond Dam. Okay. Okay, moving on to the budget. Is the Kellogg Covered Library representative here? Ah, okay. Do you want to come up and talk to us? $20 per capita 
Um, we're actually also asking for an increase in Montpelier, even though they increased last year. And we're asking for a $4 per capita increase for Montpelier. Um, that $20 per capita in Calus will compare to our $55 per capita increase in Montpelier. So uh, we do understand that certainly Montpelier being geographically closer to the library does utilize our services more, so we request significantly more from those users. Um, our budgets uh, this year is just over a million dollars. Um, it will be just over $1.1 million. Um, looks like projected for uh, our next fiscal year, more on a July year. Um, and I'm trying to see what I'm missing. Oh, the average uh, statewide per capita support for libraries is just is, uh, is seven thirty six dollars So uh, you're actually getting a great value compared to the state um, average. Uh, oh, and I should mention, of course, the flood. Uh, so <laughs> obviously, um, you all know the library was significantly impacted by the flooding. Uh, we had eight feet of water in the basement of the library, so basically just below the ceiling of the basement. Um, all of our mechanical systems were in the basement, uh, elevator, HVAC system, electrical, hot water heaters, uh, you name it, it was there. It's a, you know, big building with complicated systems, so they're all expensive. Uh, right now it's looking like somewhere between 1.3 and 1.5 million dollars worth of damage. Uh, we had a flood insurance policy that covered um, about a third of that. Um, which obviously we'll need to revisit uh, that limit. Um, and then we've uh, fundraised about a third of the total and we're working with FEMA um, to, to make up the remainder of that part. So none of our um, budget requests for next year reflects any costs related to the flooding. Um, and um, I think it's worth noting that we only stopped uh, providing services for a week um, and then um, pivoted quickly to providing uh, curbside pickup services. Uh, in the three months that our building was closed to the public, um, we managed to um, uh, provide about 60,000 items to patrons um, via curbside. So that was staff um, pan pulling books off the shelves uh, based on requests, bringing them outside to a table with someone's name on it. Uh, and in fact, we didn't have overhead lighting in the building for two months, so staff were using headlamps uh, in the building to find books. Um, I just mentioned that uh, because I think it reflects the commitment of our staff and all of us to providing services to the community. Um, so we are now fully reopened. Uh, our elevator is not functional yet. Uh, it looks like six months out for that. Um, just with the supply chain and uh, labor availability. Um, but we're um, really committed to serving the community and uh, Again, grateful for all your support. And Jeff, do you have anything to add? Uh, the only thing I want to add is that Dan was appointed uh, executive director of the library very shortly before the flood uh, came <laughs> upon us all. Uh, and he's done a remarkable job, I think, from the perspective of the board. We've been really appreciative of Dan and you know, all the employees at the library for stepping up. He's done an enormous job uh, with other employees of the library of, of fundraising. Well, I think one of the reasons we don't have to ask uh, for money to help um, repairs from the flood from the towns uh, surrounding is because of the work uh, Dan and others have been doing. So I really appreciate that. And I'll add that um, only about half of our budget is supported by municipal revenue. So um, we are uh, fundraising and tapping into our endowment for uh, about 47% of our total budget. So your, your dollars are, are going a long way. <laughs> Can I uh, thank you the report and for the work. Um, it's, it's an awesome community resource. Um, I'm curious, uh, having dealt with other flood-related issues, um, in the replacement of those mechanicals, they're likely going to have to be moved somewhere other than the basement, right? If you ever wanted anything covered in the future, uh, by <laughs> otherwise you can put them in the basement; and they just won't be covered next time. Um, is the library expecting to have to do some expansion to either displace things into new sections of the building or? No, uh, we are or? planning to move um, almost all the systems up from the basement. Uh, the one system that we know is staying is um, we're on the Montpelier Citywide District Heat mm -hmm. um, plant, which involves a series of, I, I don't claim to be a building expert, but a series of 
pipes and pumps that are located in the basement that would basically require re-plumbing the entire building to change. Um, so those will remain in the basement, but we're looking into waterproofing that room. Um, and then all the other systems are moving up. Um, we're mostly utilizing um, some closet spaces, um, some attic space that we have, um, and trying to minimize the impact on any um, public spaces. Um, and so we're not expecting to have to do an expansion. Um, and in fact, we're hoping for some silver linings out of it, um, including creating some um, small meeting room spaces, which was something that was really in demand at the library, especially with um, remote work. Um, and uh, potentially also being able to get air conditioning in the library as we have to replace our HVAC system already. Um, and if you've ever been on the second floor in the library in the summer, it gets up to 88 degrees uh, in there. Um, and with climate change the way it's looking, um, it's something that we need. We also serve, um, I think something that's maybe under-recognized is how much we serve um, like the unhoused community and uh, everyone a great welcoming space and a cooling center in the summer, a heating center in winter, so um, will allow us to better serve that. Other questions? Okay, so you're asking um, for an increase of just under $4,000 this year is what right. it comes to. Okay, All right, we'll be taking that up when we mark up the budget, we'll, we'll put that in for now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for all you do. Thanks. Um, fire departments, do you want to let, should we hear from Isma? Isma, be here first. <laughs> so, so you sent us, um, the fire department and the ambulance. Yep. Thanks. So this is my first year doing this. So <laughs> it's our first year too. Us too. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what Good is. Um, I do know that we did some cost splitting in the budget, so to try and balance out like this batch and was predominantly all paid by the fire department. And the logic was, if the ambulance went away, that expense would be a fire department expense exclusively. But then we thought, you know, we don't want to go anywhere as a fire and or ambulance service. So we decided to split it and equalize that, split that cost between both the fire and the ambulance budget. Um, the other increase that we put in there was for the stipends which goes to the firefighters. It's been that amount, as long as I've been a member, 9,400 or 9,300. So we raised that up to 15,000. Um, and you know, we, we try and develop a budget that comes across appealing to the towns, both East Montpelier and Calais. But a lot of our expenses are Things we can't control. Um, and I just priced out turnout gear. You know, $3,000 for just the pants and the coat. And you throw boots, helmet, and all that stuff, you're closer to $5,000 to outfit one person. Um, we all know fuel is getting more expensive. And so we try not to raise it up dramatically. We feel that we can cover it in other ways. Um, is there any questions you might have for me? Albert, what did you say the cost of gear is? Approximately, well, uh, the pants and coats are 2,000, or 3,200. You throw in helmet, boot, um, face mask, and all that, it, it gets up there close to $5,000. And that doesn't include SCBA. But. How many volunteers, firefighters, do you have right now? Oh, let's see. That's a good question. That's a good question. <laughs> they were about 25. Give or take. They were 25, 26. 25. Do each of them get the $9,000 stipend? No, it's done on a... Um, kind of a merit. Yeah, it's like you have to attend 50% of trainings and drills and work to be eligible. And then what we do is we take 
Well, the officers get a stipend as chief, deputy chief, and then that comes off the top, and then whatever's left, let's say six or seven thousand. And we take each attendance and we add them all up. So let's say there's 400 attendances. We would take that 7,000 divided by 400, and each attendance is worth $2.50. So you, you came 10 times, you get 10 times 250. You came 12, it gets 12 times 250. Mm -hmm. And that's how we split it up and give it out to everyone. It's also part of how we work on retention. Just to give some thanks back to folks that are putting in a lot of hours. I think a lot of times we don't get paid for things that we're doing as above and beyond responding to fire calls and responding to EMS incidents. So mm -hmm. that was a long time. Other questions? All right, you didn't speak much about ambulance. Did you have anything you wanted to say? I mean, I noticed you have a payroll for ambulance also. Yeah, the ambulance payroll we have not raised as of that draft, but part of me is thinking about that truthfully, and whether we go back and um, revisit. think revisit that at this point, yeah. um, because salary is always our challenge. I mean, last year we struggled to use the entire salary line item because of empty shifts that we just couldn't find people to work. This year, though, um, we are going to be a lot closer, if not maybe going over, on the salary line item. And a lot of it is even just overtime, um, because we're, we're relying on the same three or four folks to cover all the shifts. We are struggling to have people step up and the work day. And you know, that's something that we got to probably think about going forward in the next couple of years to how we staff that during the day, Monday through Friday, working out. Nighttime, we can get the coverage. Weekends, we can get the coverage. But it's during the workday, because per DM model, everybody has a regular day job. And then they come and help us out when they're free. Now, we rely on some firefighters that have days off during the week, so they can augment us on the weekday. But it's not sustainable model for us moving forward. And some of the issue I think is, I, I don't really have the figures for what other towns are paying, but other places pay a little bit more than we do. So we try to not climb that ladder, but sometimes I think we're gonna to have to. The overtime is an issue. Getting personnel is an issue, always has been, and it's nationwide. The volunteers, we struggle to get, to get folks to come in and do. We've also got uh, a new program called uh, VFERS. It's a different level of EMS training. It qualifies folks with a minimum of EMS training to at least drive an ambulance. So we can have a crew member uh, staff in the back of the ambulance with a patient. Mm -hmm. And we've got somebody qualified to drive that can also assist with things. If we need a higher level of care, advanced to a paramedic level, then we call for that help if we don't have it on the truck. So. A lot of factors, I think, that play into it, but it's just difficult around the state, it's difficult around the country. We have these conversations about recruitment, retention, what to pay, how, how to keep people active and be with us. And it is difficult, like Albert said, on a per diem basis. Um, a lot of us have already worked 10, 12 hour days somewhere else. Um, so. is, it, <clears throat> is it common for departments um, to start working with like hybrid models where they've got like day, daytime shifts that are salary positions and then other shifts that are covered um, by volunteer uh, and per diem? Yeah, I'm not sure about that. I, th I think for us, uh, you know, everybody is paid. <clears throat> Otherwise, I don't know if we get people to come in uh, at 3 o'clock in the morning right, right. Um, for free and then get back up at 5 and go to work. I, I think across the country, again, I, I think there are conversations about how do we, how do, we do these things. And it's such a common problem that, yeah. are there hybrid things that probably in, in conversations? Just kind of curious. Yeah. yeah. I mean, back in the day when we were just a fast squad, we didn't get paid. We right. came out day and night and did things. You know, we weren't transporting and that sort of thing. Um, it, times change. And you know, our call volume has increased. And then and the acuity of the call, <coughs> that, 
is increased, necessitating us to frequently call in for advanced care. Sometimes a helicopter or two. Um, it doesn't cost taxpayers, but it's just the level of business that's, that's out there. Fire and EMS. So. You know, having you here reminds me, you must have a meeting coming up soon, don't we? December. December. Yeah. I've got it on my calendar, Jeremy. Oh, good. Somebody will remind us. <laughs> okay. Okay. Wait, when is it? Just so I know, December when? Uh, you, you know, I'll have to look at the calendar, too. Oh, okay. I know it's in December. Okay. December 11th. That sounds about right. Yeah. December 11th, you think? Yeah. Okay. Other questions? All right. Thank you. And thanks for all you do as well. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. I also would like to thank you folks um, for your, I guess, assistance during the floods because it took one phone call for me to reach out and all of a sudden I was in the loop mm -hmm. and then Paul was brought in the loop for Woodbury mm -hmm. and getting those regular updates and emails was very much appreciated with regards to roads that were passable but bad, not passable. It was a challenging time. And so we do really appreciate that. It helps us out dramatically. That was that was Anne who largely made that happen, was it? Yeah. It got wasted upon me, but I did my best. Yes. <laughs> it was very much appreciated. I gave it a go. Yeah, it, it worked. I mean, it really did work because there's often times we'd wonder was the road open yet or not, and your afternoon update would say. So and so is passable, but it's blocked. You still can't get through. Hopefully by Tuesday it'll be all full and good to and go. Then the and then you know, tractors blocking it with yeah. their equipment because people kept driving up and up like the ambulance. So we appreciate that because we Thank did you. spend many hours cruising streets trying to figure out. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many times I drove up Singleton just to see. Yeah. <laughs> it's done. It's yeah. done. We it's done. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> talk about a creator. I didn't realize there was a full-size escalator in the bottom, big and dirty. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So then we, we did work with the community members also to try to at the tail end. Anne was largely doing it uh, at the beginning, but at the at the end we, we started working with somebody to develop a, a map that was kind of a real-time yeah, resource, yeah, which is, is something that we're hoping to kind of massage into a more permanent feature, so. Uh, but I think there's a lot of happens when you have a front porch forum and, you know, it's a small community and people were pretty open to communicating. It, you yeah. know, Rose kind of, I've got this need, I've got that need, and that's really one of the good things that we have here, is that kind of communication in that direction. So. And, you know, to hopefully get the town of East Montpelier maybe to get into that program also um, would be beneficial, too. I mean, you know, oh, it's it all cow start licensing out. It's, Ooh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know how that works. I, at the time, when you brought it up, you asked if it's possible to get multiple groups involved in that yeah. map system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I said, I think it's a benefit to have something like that. Um, but it'll be about me, down the road because we're yeah. not done with flux. Right now. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and construction in general. I mean, with the culvert right. replacements, even if it's just for a day or a night, I mean, those are really important notices to get out. I can't, was, it, was it Woodbury that was that also had somebody or Hardwick? There was somebody who had one that they had. Yeah. 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 And we started to kind of put, mesh them together, but we, we have similar resources <laughs> to, to develop something like that. But could be helpful in my season too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you do a lot right. to educate those people. All right. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That was a familiar wiggery. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Something to give us, we didn't get any. Uh, I emailed it, I, I did print off extra copies. You did email it, yeah, but somehow I couldn't find I it. I thought I saw something in there. Yeah, so you yeah. All right. All right. Here it is. So, those are all of the things that I had emailed. I might have just sent it to Barb, which would be on me. Um, Wait, no, you didn't ask me about it. It's in the folder. Uh, somehow I couldn't Barb find it. Barb sends it. everything. I was heading. Yeah, I sent it to you and Sandra. And it's in the Google folder. I, I think I saw it. I missed it. 
Quickly see it's about four thousand dollars. Yeah, that's the total. Yep. Yeah. It's uh three thousand four hundred ninety-six dollars and ninety-one cents more yeah. for the operator. Yeah. Okay, and then I see you have a couple of uh, you've written a couple of articles. Yeah, so about... uh earlier in the year, uh I believe Antulin sent us an email uh requesting to see what it would look like if we were to submit our budget to be in the town budget. You know, that it was one thing that we did this state. Well, that because last year it was held out and I know yeah, that yeah. stressed so, you out. And so, yeah, because historically you guys always put it in your, your yeah, municipal budget. Yeah, talk about that. Talk and about then the uh, a couple of years ago they moved it into the article, which I'm not sure why, but. So I put together both versions. Uh, Town meeting articles, what it would look like is the same as last year, just with different numbers. Um, yes. And then um, the other one is the appropriation request to put it into your town budget if you chose to go that route. So t talk about which one you prefer and why. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. You, you asked about why. I'll give you what was explained to me because I was at that meeting. Okay. And the gist of it was that the fire department, both Callis and Woodbury, are not part of Callis Town Government. We're an outside agency just like the library and any other group. Mm -hmm. And so those are all like, warned articles that are outside. That's how they explained it to me. And okay. So, you know, that we had to go with it because that's what they decided. They told us that's um, what they were doing. To so me, either way, it doesn't matter personally. I like it when it was in town government budget, but if it's outside of town government bond budget, so be it. And we'll just work through it. Okay. I think it just causes a certain amount of uncertainty. If it was voted down, then what happens to, you know, I know we all get stressed about the cost of things and financing, but it's a really important service. Mm -hmm. yeah, for both services, we're, we're a third and half of some of the capital items if, if they were to be shot down and you didn't know like right now if you said we're done with you guys we're not doing this anymore we would know to add that to Woodbury but we would get to town meeting we wouldn't have enough money to operate and I think you're in the same boat if the, if the articles were fit. and again historically we've had very high success 98 99% positive votes even when they were so it's, we're well supported and uh, I, I hadn't had heard that part of the conversation but um, I, I too sat in the select board and was the chair in Woodbury and, uh, our board always has a scope before the voters, which I never liked as the chair because the board has no say. You know, literally, if you look at the selectman's handbook, it simply says if it's voted in, and it's not a specific ours, let's give the fire department 100 grand, you simply can write the check. So my contention was always it would give you some, some oversight. Um, and it gives us surety, and you surety, because what would you do with no service? Okay. So that's kind of, we would obviously prefer to negotiate and talk directly with you and just have it put in the there's there's some comfort there I think on both sides that we the services you've got a service that's, it, we, I kind of look at it, it's not a you're kind of contracting for a needed service um, that's kind of how I look at it okay. how I look at it over to no the other two members never agree with me so <laughs> no. <laughs> Scott, very persuasive. Scott has something to say I yeah, really appreciate what you guys are doing um, I but the, the select board is accountable to the voters, and the select board budget is accountable to the voters. Right. Yeah. The fire department is not. Um, so this is a way to put it as an article in the 
is, is a way of making the fire departments accountable to the voters. Otherwise, they would not be. So yeah, I so strongly in, encourage the select board to continue with the, what we have always done, uh, to have the articles, to have it article by article. We are perfectly fine with leaving it that way. Yeah. Uh, we were asked to present it this way, so we presented both ob options, but yeah, it's no yeah. issue for us to submit articles every year. Um, and a representative <coughs> will always be at town meeting day, uh, mm -hmm. regardless of whether it's put in the town budget or not. Um, currently, as the president and uh, a resident of the town of Callis, I will be fire department's uh, liaison mm -hmm. at town meeting day. So mm -hmm. I have no issue either way. Charlotte, um, when you all came to uh, town meeting and really talked to us about what's driving your budget and yeah. how hard it is to find people, that was so yeah, helpful. We, I had no idea what, what kinds of things that you, that are your issues. So I found that really, really helpful, and I really recommend you keep that up. Yeah. Um, we can always go to town meeting either way. Either we always have sent somebody. Yeah, you you've always sent somebody. Sure. But I think um, was it last year? Some year we just got a lot more detail mm -hmm. than we usually did. You know what it was? It was this full day work session on a Sunday. Oh that the select board did right after you were all elected, that was the day that that big in-depth conversation oh, yeah. happened. Yeah, I remember that. Mm -hmm. Really helpful. Yeah, but James, you spoke at town meeting, didn't you? Yes, yeah, Michelle you and me. Albert yeah. spoke on yeah. behalf of yeah, It's been political. two years that they've done the articles. Prior to that, we always did. Mm -hmm. We always did it. So, yeah. Well, yeah, it does. There's a contracted service. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think because we've had, the, we've had quite a struggle this year with flooding, and we were pretty well decimated. Yeah. You know, our building, we're somewhere between 91 and 125,000 okay. damage to the station, and then another 70 yeah. or so in content. So we've been, we're still have insulation. We still haven't settled with the insurance because so we're kind of up to our eyeballs like you are with FEMA mm -hmm. problems. I'm wondering, yeah. It, none, none of that's reflected in this, but we don't know what, we're still in that question mark of what, what it's all going to look like when it all triggers off. We hope we have insulation pretty soon. Well, one of the one of the things that kind of strikes me as kind of a liability, maybe increases the liability to you guys as to include it in the budget if for whatever reason any of those items that get included in there stirs up enough uh, Turmoil, and turmoil. Then the entire budget would likely get voted down for the entire town, mm -hmm. um, which would, which would potentially disrupt quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't so far in, in my very limited experience uh, having them, having them broken out not only affords the opportunity to speak to them specifically in town meeting, although it be a little inefficient. Um, it, it seems rare that any particular budget item is ever whole hog just kind of voted down. It's, never, it, it, yeah. it's never, never happened because everybody largely supports a very necessary service, but, but also even, even when we've had debate during town meeting about a particular article or a budget, it, it ends up being more of a negotiation where something's being kind of reduced or increased or relative to a particular need. But, I, it seems like I think it's a really interesting conversation. I I, I see the merits on on both sides, um, but it, it strikes me as a potential risk because if there's enough uproar about a budget, you know, particularly you know next year we're likely going to be seeing a pretty significant increase in the town budget in general, um, right? So. I uh, don't know. No. We're, all, we're, all, we're, we're all in wondering about all yeah. Uh, yeah, everybody's, 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 everybody's got a great question mark on next year. I think we're all happy for the, till next summer, we'll all see what triggers off. And then we've got to deal with what's left. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to make a quick point. I'm yeah. kind of agnostic about, about, I see both sides, but, I, but from my point of view, consistency is really key. Especially if you're adding it back into the town budget, because it's a large item, and it'll, it'll make things look bigger, and you'll have to explain that. So my point is, unless the, this board is very clear that that's the right way to go, I would just probably leave it as is um, until you're very clear that, that, that mm -hmm. there's a compelling reason to make a change. Mm -hmm. Scott, you want to add something? Um, 
I, I was totally mistaken that Callus is going to pay for part of the garage of the new firehouse, and that's good news, but how are you paying for it? So, so Woodbury is paying for the new station right now, but Denise was on our design and production planning process throughout the whole thing. Then we were setting off to get funding, and there's way too many moving parts, so we've kept the budget as it was, $1.3 million, where we should be able to start construction in the spring. We wanted to have a conversation probably this year about looking at how Callis might participate. That was kind of the thought back when Denise, but with all the flooding and our question marks, we just thought maybe next year is better to have that. I, you know what that might look like. I mean, so that would be a so Callis would vote on a bond for no no what would what we would the the thought, what was the thought process was you wouldn't own any of this debt as long as you had a contract you paid for part of the payment. Through a through this you know percentage of service contract, mm -hmm. so you wouldn't owe any money. It's just to be part of our operating expense. Mm -hmm. And again, however we present that or is a topic for another another day. Yeah. We already have a proof for a bond from the town. We do. Yeah. We are simply waiting for yeah. the pieces for the funding. Yeah. It's been a nightmare. If you know what getting the roads put back, I've been trying for a year okay. and a half to get this building. We're over budget on the, mm -hmm. so I just don't know what the numbers we're gonna. We're in a construction loan right now. We got to see what the, that that times out after it's built, and then we'll have a real number. Because I, I gave up on the real number a year ago because it was just. We, we do know about that. You understand? We've been trying to build a dam. It's yeah. been terribly so, frustrating. Yeah. So we've got the number. I've got to own up to some cost overruns to our voters this year, and hopefully we'll be able to. Because if I don't get the contract signed this year, we won't be starting next year. That's right. right. So that's where we're at. To your question earlier. Uh, and you paying half of our operating expenses uh, actually, you know, and they're paying a third of our operating expenses. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Of our Thanks overall operating expenses. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, half. I, I, your reference. I, I'm, this is my fault, I guess, but I'm seeing this for the first time. What is this mutual aid thing and why did it go up mm -hmm. yes. so much? So like thousands of dollars. Oh, yeah. Mutual aid has gone up from 800 to 3,374. Uh, okay, so, so oh, wait, wait. Can, I'm in charge of that. He's on the board. I'm in charge of that. Um, so, so the radio, the capital fire mutual aid has um, been going to build, and they were supposed to have had a grant from the state for a $2.4 million upgrade to our radio system. Like you got to back up. What I don't know what mutual what, what so is so the, mutual aid is is when like we had we met a few fires at Palace this year. When we call other towns, they come and they don't send us any bills for the service. So it's a mutual service. Okay. Um, mutual aid also owns and operates the radio infrastructure, which is currently nine towers. It's going to be twelve towers, and there's a lot of moving parts in that. For the last two and a half years, we worked with the state. We were supposed to get a two and a half million dollar grant to pay for a new simulcast radio system. And part of that grant was they were requiring a capital fund to, to do maintenance and replacement on that in a 10-year cycle. So uh, another fellow and I went to every town, met with every select board, and we created a capital fund. And I think Woodbury's contribution is, don't hold me to this $2,300. So where did that, it's like $2,300. And that's what, so, so that was a separate line item the previous year. I think it was $2,100. It just said, well, it was, yeah, it was, yeah, $2,500 the previous year. It was in a separate line item. We just combined it into the mutual aid dues because we get the bill with our mutual aid dues now. So it, it was the same amount of money, kind of just moved into a different spot. Uh huh. So I'm And sorry. that still has moving parts because I don't, the state has kind of pulled that funding and I don't know where that's going to. So yes. it so came out of one of these items? Yeah, so directly yeah. below your dispatch. You see simulcast dispatch by men, $2,500. Yes. You oh, I see blank. here, and that's zero now. Yeah. Okay. Because now we get yeah. the bill that comes for our, our mutual aid payments includes the capital payment. So that's it's just really the, just move from one spot to another. But it's a good question. We just, we've just we been working very hard, and now they've taken our money away, so I don't know what's been happening. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're in dire straits with the radio system because it's so old and we're having a lot of failures. And we were down to one tower during the flooding because our station was flooded. Our, we were standing on an umbrella in flood water trying to respond to calls and we couldn't hear and they couldn't hear us and it was not a good time. So, mm. Well, speaking of that, um, how are your trucks? I noticed that the make truck maintenance is going way up. Too. We've had a few, uh, one caught on fire this year. Oops. That was oh, embarrassing. Geez. We saved it. We saved it. It was completely <laughs> sustainable. 
<laughs> We've had some breakdowns. I don't know why. This year has been like I really want to forget this summer because, <laughs> as you might, everything's been ruined and flooded and wet, and everything seems to be breaking. And call volumes are uh, through the ceiling. We're uh, almost at 180 when our general call volume was around 115. So we're. Huh. It's just been that kind of year. We're going to get through it and move on. Is what I hope. There's been a significant amount more of uh, wear and tear on all of our equipment due to the increased call volume. Yeah. Um, and as you guys are all painfully aware, inflation is not helpful in any of these categories. It was embarrassing to have to call someone to help me put my fire truck out. <laughs> and in my driveway, just never looked. I looked at the truck burning, I'm like, oh no. <laughs> Tegan, what can we uh, admit Bill Powell to the Zoom meeting? Say that again? Bill Powell is asking to join the Zoom meeting. Oh, oh. Zoomer. Oh. That's all short. So that's kind of our pain for the year. I don't know where, you know, again, we'll have, as far as the new fire station, we can have a conversation. I think we all want to wait a little bit. I just don't know what that's going to look like. And I stated it in our email, or in the email chain a few times, uh, just so everybody's clear. These are uh, not finalized, none of the budget or the articles or anything. Uh, our membership does not vote to approve our budget until mm -hmm. December. Um, we present it to them in November. They have a month. Uh, oh, so we may hear a revised. I, I don't revised think they're going to change right. anything, but it could happen. It doesn't usually yeah. change from okay. what we present to our membership, but it's just not finalized. Yet. All right. Thank you. And on the again, back on the inquiries, our, our current building is also in for the buyout program. I don't see how we can stay oh, there. Oh, good. Almost three, right. over three feet of water went through and moving 20 miles an hour. It is currently yellow tag. It's yellow tagged. tagged. We didn't get a red tag or he wouldn't be buying us a new station. Unfortunately, we got a yellow tag. But again, I, the, the, we've talked about the changes happening in the environment. It's to, to, to think that we want to pour $200,000 worth of repairs and equipment back into this building. It's why we wanted to move in the first place, but we, uh, so we're working with FEMA on that too. So that's really, again, I tried to do it down this road in 2011. Uh, some folks in town thought that other things would be more important and we didn't get any support and now our building's destroyed. I predicted it would happen and it, it did. Um, so we need to get out of there. We can't stay there. It's not a wise decision yeah. to keep pouring money into yeah. to the building that's gonna flood again, I'm sure. Since it's done many times. Can I ask a quick question, kind of both both groups that when we attended the uh, East Mount Pillar meeting uh, several months ago, um, they had a pretty nice uh, breakdown of, of how the call uh, dispatches were breaking down relative to what. Just kind of anecdotally, uh, do you have a sense of what is driving the increased uh, call out? It's a little bit of everything is what I would say. There's a, there's a very high usage, so we, f we respond jointly with them, first respond to, for medical calls. That's been going up, wouldn't you say? We've had an increase yeah. in medical calls. We've also had an increase in fire calls. Um, Calus has had, uh, in the last years, had two very serious fires with three people badly burned. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, I don't pretend to know. There's a lot of societal things that drive our responses, unfortunately. Great book if you ever want to read it from the 1970s calls report from engine company 82 written by Dennis Smith and it's it's about firefighters but it's about the social problems that fire firefighters and EMTs are constantly involved and one of his comments is I can't get anybody else to come but I know if I pull the fire alarm box firefighters will show up and solve my problem and we're, that's kind of what we're seeing there's an aging population there's an addiction problem there's a mental health problem all of these things I think I, you guys can yeah, that's exactly what we're telling are driving are driving this. Yeah, I'm on I'm on I actually work for them too and I work for Harvard Rescue and it's not it's not limited to Callis. Woodbury's seeing it, Harvard Rescue is seeing it, and it's it's a, it's a it's a it's a huge problem. And the legislature's kind of looking at it as a money problem and it's it's even way beyond a money problem. And it, it, it's a lot of so that kind of answer it's yeah, I, I think it's interesting to hear. I mean, it's, it's easy to kind of get wrapped up in, in one particular dialogue or the other, but, you know, to hear that it's, uh, it's, it's kind of like everything kind of coming up at once. Burlington's uh, sticking up right now, but it yeah. means socially in both our communities, the same issues are same occurring, issues just here. in their percentage smaller. 
but it's we're having, you know, I don't want to say it because usually say something happens with the shootings. We've had stabbings, we've had people beating each other up, people hurting themselves. Just, it's, those things are very serious automobile and motorcycle crashes. People are driving like maniacs. Would you say? Yeah. <laughs> or 30 under the speed limit. It's yeah, the one that's <laughs> usually at the same time. We're seeing uh, either very minor <laughs> car crashes or super severe. There's been no in between, and it seems like you know we're we're having to spend a lot of extra time and energy with our members and mental health services to make sure our members are okay because of the things they're seeing. It's, it's mm -hmm. you know this stuff takes a toll on the folks, yeah. and it's important that you don't lose your trained, uh, mm -hmm. capable folks because of a call. So we do spend a lot of time on that too. We work very well together in the CMS and fire field. We're training a lot together. You're, you're seeing a very unified front from us. Okay. Well, it's taking all of us very to keep the community lucky safe. and grateful. Yeah. And it, it is really a little bit of everything that's just gone up. Yeah. I mean, wish I could put my finger on it exactly, but slips and falls on a wet yeah. porch floor mm -hmm. to, to drug overdoses to accidents. It's all just crept up a little bit and we are a lot busier. We're at 600 and... 625, six, 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 we're well over 600. Right. 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 In fact, we're over 685 today. We're having a weekend where we're going on seven and eight calls between Saturday and Sunday. Okay. So you're out pretty much all day. <laughs> There goes your weekend. Well, It'd be interesting to include. The other day we had a call. We were trying to respond to a call, and somebody drove up to my station while I was headed, trying to get the truck out, and there was a person dying in their vehicle. Oh my God. So I'm having to split my crew while well, trying to get this guy breathing and say, go to the first call. I'll take care of this call. I'll get another ambulance. This was Friday night. It was the engine we called Friday night. Pretty serious radio communication yeah. issues. Yes. Yes. yes, we did. Yes. Due to our radio system that needs to be replaced. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, anyway, yeah, we yeah. yeah. thank you for your support. Thank I, I, you so I, said, I think I'd written to you, but you guys, I think, yeah. did a phenomenal job with the, the flooding. It was very good keeping so all this yeah. and those comments. But oh, thank yeah. you to all of you, too. I mean, the number of times I've seen you in your personal vehicle, James, yeah, hitting up my neighbors, putting up in state. So just, because I live in Calus, I respond directly from my house to go yeah, fire. And we have two to go directly. But that's, you know, East Montpelier is sending folks out to go make sure Hillside's not going to fall yeah. off or finding some path to a field to get just to get. Or checking really. someone's alarm or what's going yeah, on. Exactly. All, that stuff. Yeah. all right, well, thank you for your time. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And you'll let us know about seeing us again or what you plan to do. Yeah, uh, yeah, so it'd be good to stay in touch a little more yeah, somehow. Maybe a just a, a report yeah, every once in a while. Yeah, I can come once a month or whatever works for you I don't guys. Think you need I'll to make come sure to me. So yeah, email. Email. Yeah, I'll make month. sure that our, uh, our report gets sent out every month when we send it to our members. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. As, as Woodbury said, this is an unapproved budget for East Monk yeah. uh, We follow the same timeline okay. in December. Well, the board approves it in November, membership approves it beginning of December, and then we present it to both select boards a couple of weeks later. Okay. So, Great. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jim. Hello, Jim. Sorry. Oh, my Barbara, did, did we talk to Toby about coming? He's not here. He got the agenda and I... We, we spoke this morning. He planned to be here. Okay. Maybe he'll show up. Meanwhile, Jan's got some things to say. Okay. I sent you all, yes, through Ms. Barbara, uh, the uh, latest and best of the amendment to the um, zoning regulations. It's really called land use and development regulations. But anyway, um, it's, it's a file that's uh, labeled 117 because that was the planning commission had their final vote. And uh, we passed it on to you. Mm -hmm. And so we sent you the copy and all of the necessary reports. And it is now your purview to call a public hearing for the second legislative hearing of this set <laughs> of these uh, well, well, first we, regulations. But first we have to accept it. So does anybody have any, uh, unless you want to talk about it, we'll 
Does anybody have any questions? Have you all had a chance to look at it? Of course you're going to accept it because of you. <laughs> because you're working on I feel like you've talked <laughs> about it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are things that are going to be put on the next to-do list. I mean, we've already found things. So we, we have, the Planning Commission has a to-do list for the next revision. Well, plus a couple of us went to the last meeting, and thank you for responding to our concerns. Mm -hmm. So, appreciate that. Even though I did send a feed the horse memo. <laughs> yes, you did. I <laughs> But anyway. <laughs> Yes, and, and may I share with Jan some feedback we got from the Board of Civil Authority a little earlier this evening. It was at their summer meeting that when we were looking to set the election back on August the 1st that they asked for a more clarified, simpler version of an explanation of what this was all about. Mm -hmm. They just really gave you kudos for yeah. the work you did on that. They said that was, in fact, it was Charlotte. It was Charlotte. Thank you, Charlotte, um, for the work that you did on that. And we just really wanted to acknowledge you. Thank you so much for that. That was really important. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. In that case, um, can I have a motion to accept the latest version of the zoning regulations? Oh, come on. <laughs> yes, I will move to accept. <laughs> now right. second. We, we have a motion and a second to accept the zoning regulations. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you, Jan. And now we need to set our public hearing. And of course, we'll put it on the warning for town meeting. So I'm not sure we need to gather some documents. Well, you've sent us all the documents, haven't you? I've sent the documents. Um, I can, when you tell me what your date is that you want to hold the hearing, uh, we count back 15 days. So that's when the warning for the hearing has to be issued. Uh, I can just send you what we have to do. I mean, it's, it's exactly yeah. the same. It's the same. Okay. Language. And then you could attend the meeting and be ready to yes. field questions. Yes. Okay. So, would you guys like to choose a meeting now to hold the public hearing? I'm thinking maybe in January, because we're going to be working on the budget for the next couple of meetings. And I don't know how busy that's going to make us. We probably could do it maybe in early December. Are there rules about how soon before, too long before the vote? Yeah. Uh, yes. I, I don't have the checklist in front of you, but um, you got a lot of time that you could do it. But if you okay. want this on the vote for March, um, you have to be done by whenever it has to go on to the morning that has to be printed. So therefore, your hearing has got to be done quickly. And then, we're going to come back from that. So if you hold something in early January, um, as long as there's that time, and you're, I'm assuming you're going to take it vote to the public, yes. Yes, we will take it to the public. Okay, here it is. So, adoption. We. I just let it burn. Jan, can you read this faster than I can? You're more familiar with this, I think. Oh, here it is. Legislative body. Okay. Not less than 15 nor more than 120 days following submission. So we've got 120 days to hold our hearing. Um, and then, then we warn it. So we've got plenty of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we only have to by the first around. My concern was that we get it on the morning. Right. And I don't know what your date is going to be. Um, and I don't know if we have the key deadlines for the, for the town meeting right here. But it certainly is end of, yeah, t t it's end of January. I mean, that's when the petitions have to be in. So you can't print oh, it. Oh, right, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got till the end of January. So he is pulling it up right now. We, but 
We could hold it in early January, although I think we could probably hold it in December, too, if you wanted to do it that way. When will you have a clearer mind? No, I'm sorry. No, I just don't. It's just that we've never been through the budget process before, and I don't know. We're going to start markup at the next meeting, and then we'll probably continue markup in our December meeting. But I think we could probably hold one on when's our December meeting. You don't want to take Christmas Day. <laughs> Not that one, no. I would suggest either December 11th or January 8th would work. January 22nd is the morning. The deadline. Yeah. And so, so the hearing, we would uh, we would have a, a motion to send it to town vote. I, I'm assuming, but other than that, I think the last time we were talking about this, the concern about having it too close to a deadline would be if there's any pushback or modification, there wouldn't be any time for doing doing that um, at at all. Uh, so that, that, I guess, would, I mean, we've already now recircled back on it again, so it seems unlikely that there would be any, anything substantive there, but, um, but I'd get nervous, I guess, about doing it in the beginning of January and then have some, some pivot happen or, and, and then not have time okay. to, to I, I, I hear you, um, although I don't remember how many people really came to the Planning Commission hearing, it was only like 10 or 15. Right, right. And it was, uh, there were, you two were there, mm -hmm. and then the rest were all part of conservation and lakes and streams. And so um, the, I, they're, they're fully yep. b b built into this. So yeah, I'm not yeah. too worried about that unless somebody all of a sudden reads River Corridor and re realizes there's certain things going on. I don't know, but I doubt it. <laughs> Well, my reality is people aren't reading this anyway. Shall we aim for December 11th then? I think we could probably do it because I think as you say, it, well, we could do it at 6, we could even do it at 5 if you want. Let's see, we'll, by then we'll have a pretty good idea of how much time we have to spend on the budget and we can just plan to meet earlier for the hearing if we okay. need to. So if you're going to have it the 11th of December, we have to have it warm and in the paper by something like November, uh, right after Thanksgiving. Yeah. I think I counted that, something like that. Yeah. Okay. So you haven't written a warning, have you? So we need to do that. Right, but I can, send, I can ship that to T and then she can get it out, and Barbara, and then yeah. it all, it takes all the warning. Yeah. Language is pretty much the same, except it would change the date. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I would need to know the time. And right. I'm assuming it would be here. Would it be part of our regular meeting or would it start at Well, I, I was thinking after, after our next meeting, which is what, just after Thanksgiving, November 27th, we'll have a better sense of how much more time we're gonna need for the budget. That is not enough time though, is it? Mm -hmm. it we no. have to- I, I think it's about January. Let's just do it in January and then yeah, maybe that's safer then, given that we can't, we don't know. Do, do we know what we're doing for a second December meeting since our... Since it's on Christmas Day? It would be Day. Christmas Day would be our regular I'm meeting. Assuming. I'm assuming we're not going to meet. <laughs> <laughs> do, do we... We have not made a plan for that, no. I'm hoping we can skip it, that we'll have the budget done by then. If we don't, we may plan another meeting. You want to do it January? I guess we better then, okay. given that. I think we so we'll, we'll aim for January 8th. For all of us. Yeah. Yeah. I think it'd be better yeah. to be comfortable and, yeah. and be sure of the time. Okay. And we'll know by after the next meeting. Sure like yeah. yeah. It's January 8th. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. I'll let you know. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. Jan. <laughs> Toby. You're our new assistant road commissioner, by the way. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what was me? I'm not sure which, I, which answer I have. <laughs> so everybody's seen the budget worksheet?
Why did this always happen to me? Barbara, do you have an extra one? I don't seem to have it. Uh, uh, say of Sandra's copy? No. Of Toby's. It doesn't matter. I know I printed it out. Uh, I seem to have three of the general and none of the highway. Can I look at yours, Jordan? Mm -hmm. So the first uh, first section is wage and benefits. Um, and under highway wages, it. Um, it, it proposes $25, 40 hours a week for 52 weeks for four employees. So, and it, it also um, calculates um, overtime for those four people. So essentially it was 210 in 24, it's now 238. Most of that is driven by the fact that they're now getting $25 an hour and that's where the increase came from. The 800, you know, essentially the 819 hours is a historical track of overtime over the years, roughly 200 per person for four member crew, uh, or less than 150. Um, so that's where that number comes from. Um, the temporary, that's part-time uh, employees that would be either Dana or, or Ed. Um, and that only really covers one position for a part-timer. Um, so until we get four full-time, some of that full-time will cover a part-timer that's not on that line item. Um, a road foreman, which we're all hoping for, it's starting at $27. Um, that 56 does not include any overtime for that position. So if you want to adjust that to show any overtime, um, that might show up. And again, <clears throat> with a five-person crew, the foreman's actually going to be out plowing and so it's going to run up some overtime. Um, you can figure out, you know, essentially 100 hours or 150 hours to add into that particular line of um, operations. So, so how much would that be? Because I think probably we are going to do that. I'm not sure. That hasn't been calculated. So it's 27 times probably 100 hours at least of overtime. A time and a half of 27, so it's going to be another thousands yeah. of dollars. Um, the grant administrator, if I continue to per pursue my career here, um, <laughs> uh, I'll stay. I'll stay flatlined. I will not ask for a raise. No, but we're changing your title. Well, that's okay. Um, <laughs> so you're now assistant road commissioner. Right. For however long that lasts until right. I go back to being grant administrator. <laughs> Um, so that 16,000 is a good number. Mm -hmm. um, everything after that is all going to be based on how many employees we have, what their benefits are, do they get a family plan or not a family plan. So that's sort of, uh, that's all Sandra's numbers. Mm -hmm. So all of the next items in wage and salary are wage and benefits. The only thing I noticed was there's a benefits contingency number of 15,000. And that's probably, she hasn't figured out what the benefits package for everybody combined is going to be. Um, and if you notice the total wage and benefits, the increase is $15,000. So literally the only change that we're really looking at is that contingency fund. All the rest of the stuff is all pretty much um, Toby, it looks like that's in, in 24 as well, though. That shows yeah. up for the first time there. Right. Oh, yeah, okay. So that's, again, that's a level funding kind of thing. Um, so literally, the increase is really the raise to $25 an hour for, this, for the wage, the road crew guys. Any other questions on all those first items? I mean, again, that's all benefits and health insurance and... and Beamers, uniforms. Um, the Why one thing that uh, the MRGP fees that show up there, there's also a permit fee. So essentially, there's like a $600 fee to fill out the application for the permit plus the $1,500. So there's another $600 that may show up there. I think it's $640 is the fee permit. 
Why and is this under the way, they wages I have no benefits? I just thought of it, Sandra threw, threw it in that line item, so essentially it's... Okay. But just so you're aware, yeah. we can either include that or not include that. I don't think it's critical because 640 can just roll into something else. <clears throat> so then the next section is road maintenance. And the second item is roadside mall. So essentially we had $5,000 in there. Um, that does not cover rental of a, a roadside mower for four weeks in the spring and four weeks in the fall. So the number there is $28,000. That's a really, that's a big change. That's the big hit. So um, Dana did most of the mowing this fall for three weeks. Um, we probably got, I would say, 60% of the roads mowed. So I think it definitely needs a four week. Mm. And if you need it twice a year, it's going to be the $28,000. Um, Have again, we done it? Is that locked in? Well, the price is $3,500 now. I don't know what next spring the rental would be per week. Okay, we've reserved it for next spring, have we? Not yet. Not yet. But we can. Yeah. Right. I mean, we can lock in that step. Mm -hmm. And the, again, the other option is okay. So if you then think to the next step is, if we purchased and used um, boom mower for seventy, eighty thousand dollars and paid it off in three or four years, it would be twenty-eight thousand a year. But it would only be four years, and at the end of four years. That line item would go away. So again, so it's up to you guys to look at that, whether you include this. This is probably what you need for next year, unless you decide. And if you do decide to then purchase, this is already in your budget to take that first payment. Yeah, so I mean, I think that's, I'd, I've got a lot, you know, a lot more question. I, I think okay. existentially we have a lot of questions as a town to ask about our equipment, but I think it's prudent to probably put it in there right. so as a rental the, so expense. So if you leave the 28 right. in, this, in this thing, you can either say it's for rental or it's for purchase. Yeah. So that way, it, you know, it's, it's somewhere near the close number that you need in order to start paying for if you purchase one as opposed to renting it for twice a year. Mm -hmm. The other thing that that gives you is um, if you rent it for four weeks and three weeks it's pouring rain and it's miserable and you're not really getting efficient use of the machinery, you're locked into those, that time frame. If you own it, you have the flexibility to okay. spread it out over a longer period of time. Um, so the next item that went up is gravel. So the reason I originally put a, an additional 10000 in there is gravel has gone from twelve fifty a cubic yard to $17 a cubic yard. So material costs have gone up. But what, as I thought more about it, and this is something we can, you guys can decide, because of the July flood, a lot of roads that we might have put gravel on have already been repaired under FEMA. And so the amount of gravel roads that need to be repaired or improved next year may be a lot less than we normally look at. And so I'm thinking that that might actually be better um, left as a flat line and only kind of do 80,000 there. Um, and, and it might even be less than that. I mean, we have had miles of roads that have been rebuilt and resurfaced and put back into good shape. I don't have a, I mean, I don't have a, a total number of how many miles of road that we actually repaired, but it's probably in four or five miles, and that's easily what we would normally do in a, in a year with gravel and repairing roads and washouts and that kind of stuff. So I would say let's put that back to 80,000. Um, it's tracked pretty much around that number. Um, last year's actual were 92,000. I don't know if that was a bad year, good year, whatever. But I think because of the FEMA issue, because of the July storms, that we're probably don't have to raise that, even though the price of gravel has gone up. I think we'll use less material. Um, and a lot of a lot of gravel we use is in the spring and mud season. A lot of roads we've repaired so that mud season is not as it's not as difficult a project for us to put gravel in in the spring. Um, sand. Can I ask um, a quick question about yeah, sure. uh, the gravel? Um, do you have a sense on whether or not we're 
potentially missing out on on any negotiating or, or leverage in negotiating um, for like bulk purchase of gravel during particular times of year? Is there an opportunity for us to save money there if we could figure out a way to store um, it? So, so we do do different pits. So it's not always just one pit that says, okay, we have 10,000 cubic yeah. yards we're gonna do. Um, part of it is stockpiling too, because if we don't have room for stockpiling, it doesn't make sense to buy a whole lot of it and the pits make it as they need it or as they're working you know, yeah. in the summer. So I'm not really sure that's a, an advantage. Um, we do have a stockpile that we put up in the, in the fall for mud season in the spring so that we have an on-site pile, but it's nowhere near what we would have stockpile for like our sand for the winter. Right. right. So I, I don't think we can actually purchase, we might be able to purchase a lot, but I'm not sure the pits want to deal with that if we're not taking it all at once or at a period of time when they have a pricing. Um, so I, I, we haven't done that, and we can certainly look into it if you want to pursue that. I think long term, it, it, it you know, I, I look at it kind of like the roads as like a, a capital plan almost, mm -hmm. you know, um, and um, the long term planning, you know, what, what types of resources uh, or space or capacity, you know, should we be considering, um, you know, I don't, I don't think it's likely that our need for materials is going to go down. <laughs> um, and uh, the, you know, the people who are going to be the well, best positioned uh, to control their costs are the ones who are going to be able to buy the most and store the most when you know, right. before so, it's so needed. Otherwise, you've got, right. you've got demand issues. And the well, pits can and only crush them. We saw that during the July floods, the demand was everybody wanted yeah, everything. Yeah, and all of a sudden, the price went up. And every, right. Nobody had anything. And we went where we had to go. And we did a lot of driving to get materials to bring it back to town. Um, I, I can investigate whether or not any of the pits will actually consider you know, a bulk purchase that we guarantee we're going to buy this many yards of gravel. It's a question of do we have on-site storage capacity? We do for the sand because we need it on-site every year for the winter. We can't be driving to pick it up. So that, that's not going to be a, a factor. That's every year we build a sand pile up and that's sitting there ready for use all winter long. I mean, it's usually done in the spring before July 1st. Mm. Um, but gravel, it's, that's a hard, it's a hard number to know. And again, there's different types of gravel. So yeah. there's base gravel, there's top gravel, there's travel gravel. So again, you'd have three or four different piles. And again, the capacity on the, on the site is probably not easily taken care of. Um, the biggest issue we're going to deal with um, coming up is trucking because the sand pile used to be a two minute drive behind the pit, behind to the pit behind mm -hmm. us and back. Now we're going to have to go somewhere to find sand. We'll come. Although we didn't get a chance to, I forgot to tell you today, they learned that Marshfield is having unwashed sand truck to them. And it's a better price than I think what we were paying for the washed stuff we currently get right. and have to mix rocks in. Right, and, and that's okay except that Unwashed sand has a lot of clay and materials in it that when you put it down on the road all winter ends up giving you a worse mud nightmare. Yeah. Because essentially you're adding all that sand to the road the road surface all winter long. And in the spring, if it's all clay and has other stuff in it, it becomes worse for mud season. So it's one of those things is is it is it better to pay a little bit more for washed sand and have a better a better mud season in the spring? Again, it's um, it's not all about price; it's about product. And um, we have, I, you know, I haven't talked to the guys yet about where we're going to get replacement sand for next year. That will be come up in the spring about who's got it and what's the price and you know how much trucking do we need to do that. The other thing is, um, you know, so for the pit right behind the garage, we'd use our own trucks because it's just there and back, there and back, and it's up the hill and dump into a big pile. But if we go off-site to a larger 
a pit somewhere else miles away, it might make sense to hire somebody with a really big truck and have fewer loads and pay less money. The big problem is how do they dump into our pile? They might have to dump in the yard and we would have to move it into our pile. So again, trying to refigure out how that works because our 10 wheelers can back up there and dump, but a, a big long tractor trailer full of sand can't do that. So it, it's a question of figuring out how we do that, um, how we make that work. I mean, it makes sense to have just one truck with three or four times the, the capacity of our single trucks. So we pay less for trucking, but Again, it's how do we manage it when it gets to the yard? So well, that and the, and the wear and tear on the trucks, you know, I think that it's, right. that it's, it's a lot to be asking and expensive, both in the, the labor that we have plus the wear and tear on the trucks to be sending our trucks to go out. And right, so it's, you know, it's a lot of manpower and equipment that's on the road. Um, again, that's the reality. We've been lucky for all these years to have this manpower right behind us. And um, that's it's no longer available. So I would say we need gravel at 80, um, sand um, was 35, I'd say at least 40 because who knows where, where that number is going to be when we actually go by sand next year. Um, everything else, um, so we get down to road salt, I think road salt's going to go up, so I did a percentage, a low percent, like 3 or 4% on just the cost of materials. Um, Chloride, again, probably is going to go up again, a small increase there. We just have to ask, what's magic salt? Um, so essentially when we do regular salt at a certain temperature, it doesn't work anymore. So it, when it's really, really cold, we add this chemical to the salt that we go spread, and it actually works at a, a below zero. Oh. So when we do the county road, it actually works. Instead of just dropping it there, nothing's happened. Mm. So it's an additive to the um, to the salt trucks when we when the temperatures are that that deep. Um, so again, the bottom line is there's an increase of forty thousand. So we can take ten off of that, so it's only thirty thousand. We do the gravel, and then it's the question about twenty eight thousand for the for the um, the mowing issue. So essentially, we've only really increased it by the mowing factor. Any questions on anything else in there? The road signs, I guess, are, are there a big chunk of signs that need replacing? Um, we could probably cut that in half if you want. I mean, essentially, it's mostly road signs. And at some point, a lot of the speed limit signs or retro-reflective need to be replaced because they're just old and not doing their thing. Um, there's not a lot of... Um, we don't spend a lot of time going out there and investigating which ones need to be replaced, but um, uh, so the the actual from the year before is all the radar signs. Right. That's why that number is right. So if you want to drop that back to three thousand, that's certainly um, that's certainly probably reasonable for replacing individual um, mm -hmm. street signs, road signs, and then touching a few. So you might you might be able to make a savings there in your Yeah, I know there was coverage. some dialogue around the speed limit signs um, relative to well for one we're not changing the speed limits in the county at the moment. Um, and but there's still some outstanding traffic studies to be done, right? And there was a little yeah. bit of dialogue on the roads the speed limit signs not being in compliance, but I could see for at least a year rolling it back a little bit and then so the, for the signs bit. are fine as long as you can prove they have the reflectivity mm -hmm. so there's actually a, a test that you can do on an existing sign i'm not sure exactly how that works whether it's with a flashlight and a meter or something so essentially there are probably a lot of signs that have been up 15 years and are kind of dusty and dirty and not really meeting the standard but no one calls this into it into account for it well, actually, we said they, they, they don't, they, like, if they stop people for speeding, if the signs aren't to right. the spec at the height, and then they're too small. So, so the real issue is the sign has to be, so on a regular road, the sign has to be five feet above the edge of the travel road. And if it's less than that, then it's not liable. It's not, it's not reasonable. If it's in a village setting, it has to be seven feet 
And that was actually one of the issues in Maple Corner. Somebody right. came down there and then challenged it because he right. was from the Agency of Transportation and understood the rule. And he knew the sign was not valid, so essentially it got thrown out. Mm -hmm. So the one thing you would have to do, the real reality is the five feet, seven feet, more than anything, mm -hmm. then the reflectivity. So oh, essentially, so size change. wasn't there also a size change? Only for the, the name of the, the road, not for the not for the speed limit. So well, we did get something from the Department of Pub Public Safety at one point saying a bunch of our signs weren't high enough, and right. some of them so were again, it's, it's the five foot issue. So essentially, from the edge of the travel portion. So if it slopes down, it's at the edge, mm -hmm. and you go straight across, and that sign has to be above five feet in order to be legal. And I'm sure there's plenty of signs around town that if we wanted to spend time finding them, we could do that. But I think there's 300 plus signs, so there's, there's a little bit of Well, I'm, I'm looking at um, the financial report for September through October, and I notice we've already spent $4,000 on road signs in this fiscal year. And a lot of those, I mean, they... They're replacement of road, road signs. Of road signs. Street yeah, signs, right. It is important to know that oh, street probably 80% of those street signs will get stolen, like, within a week. <laughs> I mean, they just, they disappeared. They okay. greased the poles like you do for squirrels. They've done everything. Like, they just, people... I beg your pardon. They take the poles. So they make it. They, my father used to do that to keep the squirrels so they'd slide up from the bird feeder, but... Uh -huh. No, they've tried different things to deter people, and instead they would just go and cut the whole pole off and take the sign. So, like Random Road gets a new sign every. Woodbury Mountain year or two. always like. Stop taking the sign. Not in my basement. You know, so that is going to cause so, less. So they would need to go to everybody's basement. <laughs> <laughs> but we have. I know Maple Corner had started with they wanted you know like pedestrians walking and those sorts of signs. I know right. we've had multiple requests for yield signs at various kind of Ys that come out on to the roads and in the East Palace Village. Certainly, they've been asking for signs about pedestrians. So just just a regular sign that says street sign Moscow Woods is like 150 bucks. Yeah. Well, this was apropos of your saying we could reduce this to 3000 and I'm just noticing that we've already spent 4000 this year, and right. we're only a quarter of a way through the year. Right. Really? Well, hopefully, the, hopefully the bandits have gotten all the signs they want. You're sticking with your 3000 There's 25 or 30 signs sitting in the garage right now that haven't been put that up. That haven't been put up because they, I think they just feel so they're going to put them up and they're going to be gone the next day. So. <laughs> Um, I'm, but not yeah, sure, but they I'm not have, sure there's any way to solve that problem. Okay. That's just the... Uh, well, and again, so... Each line item, you can say we're high or low or whatever, but it, it's at the end of the year, if you're 20,000 under or 40,000 over, that's the only thing you're really looking at. Because there's going to be a lot of other line items that we crystal ball that are never going to yeah. go there and go okay. over, so... Um, okay. Okay, so that takes care of maintenance. Um, maintenance and fuel. Uh, so we normally carry, and again, before we used to itemize repairs for individual vehicles, we used to just do it all at once. So 60,000 sort of covers all of the non-itemized um, vehicles. Um, and then based on what we have done in the past on the ones that we were actually tracking. So essentially the Volvo excavator, 4,000. Um, the Western Star dump is gone, so there's nothing there. Uh, the 17, 2,000 from what we have in history. The 19, I put 2,000 in there because it's getting old. Um, in the International, we've had lots of repairs on that. So essentially, if you look at uh, so the other bottom line item is gas, oil, and diesel. So essentially, since we bought a diesel pickup truck, there will not be all that gasoline going into the pickup truck, so I reduced that by $5,000. And if you look at that, we're level funded, that line, that line, that group of line items. Okay. Question. Yep. That dust control sprayer tank, is that the chlorinator? Yeah. Okay, and then, like right now, they don't have a means to use it because they were down, because they had rigged a dump truck and then they right. lost so the Right, so we truck. talked about that and probably what we'll do is buy a new trailer in the future and put it on a trailer. That's what the discussion is right now, mm -hmm. rather than putting in a big 10-wheeler. Okay, 
And then they could just haul the trailer? Right, they just pull okay. the trailer. Right. So it used to go into a six-wheeler. So it was a tank on a, on a skid with a motor and stuff. And the problem with that is, as you drive it down the road, you're putting salt all over the truck, and it, it rusts away. And so it deteriorates really quickly. So putting it on a trailer that might be aluminum is a better solution. And, we're, and um, from what I understand, talking to the road crew, the new pickup can actually pull that trailer. We used to pull it with a one-ton truck because the, the pickup did not have the capacity before. Now it does. So essentially, we have two options to connect that trailer. So essentially, purchasing the trailer next spring to start doing chloride would sort of be in the, in the product. So is the trailer in here? No, it's not. Okay. It's not in there. So essentially, we'll. Figure out what we. Well, I don't know. I don't know what a, the aluminum trailer will cost. I haven't priced it out yet. But um, when we look at a capital plan, we can maybe throw it into a capital plan. Um, mm -hmm. That may or may not show up in specific. Mm -hmm. um, town garage. The next section. Essentially, level funding everything in there. There's nothing really that's going to change. <coughs> Insurance again. Um, I don't know if VLCT is changing the rates for all of this stuff. Um, that's up to Sandra to let you know if there's any new, because she had, you know, she went through a new evaluation of buildings and materials and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> the one thing that's not included in here is the VLCT passive grant match. So um, I've looked at that. We can actually get a grant to put a fire alarm dial-out system in the town office. And I am trying to figure out whether we can get a 100% grant on that or what, what the number is, so I'm putting that together. Depending on how much we pay VLCT for our insurance is how much the, debt, the total balance of the, um, of the grant availability is. So right now, I think it's up to about 2,500 that we would get in a grant, and the, and the alarm system is like 4,000 plus. But if, if it turns out we pay more, we might get 100% of the grant and have it all paid for. So that's that's on the table, but I don't have the details on that. So I'm not putting anything in there at this, at this Is time. Sandra aware of that? Pardon me? Wait, is Sandra aware of that? Yeah. So I'm, she'll catch it when, when we figure that yeah, out. Yeah. Um, okay. So I reached out to her to find out what it is exactly that we pay, because the grant says if you pay 70000 you get 2500 limit. If you pay 100000 it's... 3,500, I don't have that number yet, so okay. um, we can throw that in. If, and so it would be the differential between what the grant would be and what the town would have to pay in order to go in there for the match. Mm -hmm. Toby, is it a fire alarm system or a security system? Just fire alarm. Fire alarm. Everything's in the vault, so if you can get in the vault, good luck. <laughs> There's nothing else worth stealing there, except for all the computers. Mountain View was there this afternoon. Yeah. Taking a look, so they'll give us a quote. Right. Um, but so it, so at the town office there is no dial out alarm. There's only smoke detectors. So if mm -hmm. something happened in the town office when no one's there, nobody knows it until it burns to the ground. That's the point of putting a fire alarm dial out system in there. Mm -hmm. This one, this one, this million dollar building has a dial out. Mm -hmm. um, so that's insurance. Really, no change. Um, so now we go to grants, which of course I know rule something about. <laughs> um, so the, the Cantail French mattress. So that's a project that costs one hundred and fifty-one thousand dollars. And if we hire an outside contractor, we have to pay twenty percent. So that would be the thirty thousand dollars if you hire an outside contractor. The issue is sometimes the road crew can do that project. And if the road crew does that project, then there's no out-of-pocket cost. So the question is, I haven't quite decided what the issue, whether or not. So here's the theory. If the road crew does the work and it's what they can do, it takes them off regular maintenance for two, three, four weeks. If you hire a contractor, they're still doing work while the contractor is doing them, but you pay the 30%, you pay the 20% the 20 out of pocket instead of the match. Mm -hmm. 
because of the July flood, a lot of roads have been repaired. So there's a lot of maintenance that's been moved ahead. And so maybe next year the road maintenance can, can afford a two or three week distraction by the road crew to do this kind of work. I really haven't quite figured that out yet. Um, so I'm, I've put that number in there as a placeholder for you guys to take a look at. We could eliminate that if we decide, okay, the road crew is going to do that, and we're, we're comfortable with that because we're not paying a contractor that thirty thousand dollars. We're just putting it into our budget of regular work, road work. Question: yep. Is it possible to contract out just very specific? I think the one piece of that project that the guys were most nervous about was the large stone beating up their trucks. Right. Yeah, no, you can do that, but again, so now you're paying a contractor, so you've got to put some money into, into your budget that's not in your highway manpower uh, time. Yeah, I guess I'd, I'd posit a couple of things in there. You know, I think the point well taken that the, a lot of roads got a lot of attention because there was washout and we may not need to put forth as much effort in, in maintaining the roads and, and could maybe allocate some of that toward toward that. But we have a lot of mileage of roads and um, and th those those areas of repair were acutely focused in, in particular areas. And so so I did um, so as part of the FEMA documentation, yeah. we had to actually track how many of repairs we did on each road. So I haven't quite done a, a summation of that, but we might be able to say there's four and a half miles that we have brought up to snuff. Um, and that might be the total that we would do in a, in a regular yeah. maintenance season. So essentially, until we sort of um, determine what that has already proved, improved for us, or a million, one point five million dollars. Yeah. Um, it. So I would sort of leave this up in the air. I'll, I can give you a report on what's there, and again, maybe a quick trip around town to find places where we think we need to do work, um, and give you an update on saying this is what we see. It's the maintenance schedule for next year. Um, you can make that decision whether to include this thirty thousand or not thirty thousand. So um, leave, leave that sort of as a pending. I put it in as a you know as a contractor project just because that's the way it, it should, you should look at it at worst case scenario. Yeah, I think I think that's a, a appropriate. Um, so the scoping study that's the study for this culvert over here. Um, we already you know have engaged that. That's a grant. Um, in FY twenty five. Um, 11,320 is what they will bill us for that as they complete it into FY25. It's not going to be done in FY24. So essentially that's a fixed number. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is the $10,000 is our 10% share of the East Calus Bridge temporary repair. I've been um, chasing the um, the engineer over there to essentially help me put that into a bid package so we can put it out in the spring, and that's going to be a contractor issue. The road crew doesn't do that kind of work, mm -hmm. um, so it's going to be a contractor. So 10% of the $100,000 grant is going to be a uh, cost. So you've got a, you know, a total increase of 21000 and again, that's all dependent on whether or not you decide that road crew can do that. Um, French mattress. You, you're saying French mattress, but you've got it on Bliss Road. I, I'm confused. Um, no, I updated that. It got moved. It was in the wrong place on the point. Oh, I'm looking something. at the wrong version. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's a work in progress. I found a couple okay. of other errors that Sandra and I had missed. So um, okay. the, late, the latest version is where we are. Okay. So that takes care of highway grants. Um, capital, so wood chipper. Principal and interest, we still owe that. Uh, 2023 20, Western Star, um, that's the new truck. Um, and that's going to be the payment for FY25. So, um, 
And then, so the Highway Capital Equipment Fund, I threw 50000 in there, so essentially we're still raising $100,000 for its capital and purchasing. So we don't have, a, we don't have a, a debt to pay in that year, but we want to keep um, averaging 100 to 100 plus to maintain the capital plan. Because in the future, there'll be a greater, there'll be another truck that we're about to order. Mm -hmm. So essentially, when we look at the capital plan, you'll see that we grow from 100 a year to almost 200 a year of liability each year. And we should be sort of growing that number, so we don't want to go behind. I mean, you might even want to go 60,000 to get to 100 or whatever. That number is something that you want to maintain. And every year, I mean, if, depending on what we owe in payments every year, you may want to add 25,000 each year as you're growing to get to that number of 200,000 to maintain the capital plan over time. Um, so that gets us to a bottom line of 1,057,000. That's an increase of 74, which is an 8% increase from last year's budget. Um, so with a couple of changes in there, it might be a little bit less and get down to maybe 7% mm -hmm. increase over time. A lot of that is salary and um, mowing and increases in materials. So it's not a really big leap because we're doing anything out of the ordinary. So if we did decide to go ahead and purchase the mower, that could be done this winter? If it's still we available. Could move the 28 to there? If yeah. it's still available. Right. All right, so we ought to have a discussion about that next week. Right. Or next meeting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I can check on that to see if it's the used one is still available. Okay. Um, just so updates on what's going on at the Town Garage. Um, we're meeting on Wednesday with a salesman from Charlie Boyce to inspect the new truck that, we, that we're going to purchase. Um, so hopefully get a contract in hand with a price on that, so we'll know what we're going with that and we'll trade in on the 2014. Um, the new Western Star 2023 had an oil consumption problem, and it's now up in Charlie Boys. It's under warranty. Um, they think it might be a ring problem, so essentially it's been burning oil because something's wrong with the motor, but it will be fixed, but right now it's out of service. So. For the first storm of the year, we had a hose break on the one time, so that was out of service halfway through its route. And then we had, um, the 2014 had an uh, antifreeze issue, was leaking antifreeze, and so essentially they struggled with just two or three trucks to get to sending all the loads. So again, having equipment that works is, is sort of a goal, and you know, what we've said, you know, that's an important thing to spend money on, and, and, and keep uh, mm -hmm. the other thing I noticed in looking at uh, pricing for the new truck is um, so the extended warranty for seven years used to be in five or six thousand dollars. It's now over seventeen thousand dollars for the same color. And so I'm, I'm reconsidering whether or not we buy the extended um, warranty or just put some money aside every year in case we do have a problem. So essentially create a contingency fund each year that grows so that if there is a $15,000 repair, we're not paying it up front and never getting th anything out of it because essentially I'm not sure that we've had the luck of having the extended warranty actually uh, work for us. We had it not work for us once where the disaster happened 30 days after the extended warranty expired and cost us $15,000. So I'm looking at that and trying to evaluate, you know, what our history is of repairs and whether or not we should not do that up front, but, but put money aside. So essentially create an um, extended warranty line item and put money in there every year so that essentially that would help us cover those issues going forward. But it's still, it, you know, still, if you look at our history, trucks that are more than seven years old start to fall apart really fast, and there's a lot of repairs and stuff. So we still should target that seven-year replacement theory, but maybe not necessarily with the insurance policy. So I'll, I'll let you know what I find out about that. But. Yeah, I wonder if, um, <coughs> you know, I, think, I, 
think <clears throat> coding expenses can be a, you know a really powerful tool and I, I wonder as we start adding different pieces of equipment and managing kind of different categories right. of so, equipment, so it makes our, our new town minister. Well, that's 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 <laughs> that, that, out what, what truck. Let me get there, Toby. That's what I'm trying to get at here. There's two things that I think that I'd really uh, like to see, and um, and I've talked a little bit about this with Kari. It's getting a little bit more transparency in like where these costs are coming from, mm -hmm. and I think that I think you're on. You know, a really well, a big, great track there, and it did okay. to get to get for each of the different categories of truck what our um, average expenses are, so that we're starting to build, uh, you know, a capital fund relative to that categorization of truck. You know, what does it look like at the six wheelers? What does it look like at the one ton level? What does it look like at um, at at the ten wheeler level? And then you know, you've got excavators and. Uh, mowing equipment and that sort of thing that you know will have a different um, quantifiable operating cost and and frankly to take it a step further it'd be nice to know what that is relative to the hours uh, used not necessarily probably at the trucks but definitely at the equipment level you know excavators uh, graders and mowers so there are folders that Alfie used to do so when he would do a service but it never got into the right. accounting side. So essentially when these bills come in, they just need to be coded for the, essentially there's a code for each vehicle. Right. They just need to be coded in order for us to track that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think that would be huge. And, and sometimes the guys do in-house service that doesn't get recorded. Right. And that's going to be the hard part. Well, when they fix something or whatever, yeah. and again, so. So that brings me to the second point, which is I think we need to be looking a lot closer, particularly with the uh, increase in, uh, in labor costs and, and taking a better look at like what, what our cost of doing any particular work is relative to our labor costs, equipment costs, et cetera, and comparing that to other ways. I mean, the, the reality is that we're going to have a finite number of hours that these guys can work to do certain projects, and I think it seems to be you know, a, a little bit of a blind spot on on how many hours so we the, actually so have I to allocate. So I think the quickest way to deal with that is to create a little pad, a, a pad that every time somebody does in-house repairs, excavator welded this, spent this, spent two hours, and then essentially that piece of paper can then go to whoever's going to do the the accounting. But that requires them to actually participate and record that stuff. Otherwise, they just go in the shop and they do the work and nobody knows it happened and we don't know what the overhead and the, and the repair costs are for particular pieces of equipment. Yeah, I think that they would be willing to... No, I think it would be very simple. We just have to create a form that's easy yeah, for them because to Because it goes out. to the cost, too, of having equipment that's not in great shape and the amount of time and money and labor and hours they spend fixing it. I mean, half of right. the other day, was it Thursday? Yeah, mm -hmm. they were up to like six between the hoses and the right. having bootsies coming out. And well, I mean, so the unfortunate thing is they sent the one ton down to Fairfield in New Hampshire and they were supposed to check everything out and it came back and it blew a hose the first time it went out after that. So, so what are you getting for your money yeah. when you go do that? I mean, again, some of those things are not things that you can see and they're going to happen and that's what happens. And, um, you know, we don't have a full-time mechanic in there that's running under the trucks every day checking everything and doing inventories. They go out, they check the oil and make sure everything's working and they go out and when it breaks, they fix it in the field and bring it back and do the rest of the repair. That's just how it works because we don't have, you know, it's like some town highway departments have a full-time mechanic and all he does is go over trucks all day long and take care of that. We just don't have that resource. So essentially we're... We're, we're fighting the problems when they happen, not before they happen. And, um, you know, most guys take, take um, uh, pride in their trucks and they walk around and check everything and sometimes things just happen and there's not a lot that you can see that that's about to happen. So. Um, but it, if, we, if we do a little more tracking and make sure whenever the guys do a repair that they code it and we get some kind of record, that will give you a better sense of where we're at instead of just $60,000 for a repair. That time versus money trade off? Well, it'll, it'll just show you where, what piece of equipment is costing you more money than another, and it, it probably will tell you, 
if it's seven years old, get rid of it because it's going to start costing you more money. And, and the biggest cost is not being out doing work in a snowstorm. Mm -hmm. So instead of five trucks, you have four and the guys are working harder and it's just not, not doing what we wanted to do. I mean, and that was the point of having the spare originally was if one truck was down, we had another truck that was sitting there waiting to go. Mm -hmm. Now, essentially, all five trucks are out, there's no spare, so if something breaks, we have to re reorient the four, the four routes instead of five routes. Thanks, Toby. Yeah. Um, I did um, post the job descriptions for the part-time temporary and the form of the both local roads and the job, the Mont job today. So that's, they're out there. Not sure how soon we'll hear anything. But yeah. It's out there. Okay. Well, thanks. Yeah. yeah. Any uh, questions for Toby? Thank you. Uh, did Thank we you. post anything through Indeed for those positions? Not with Indeed, it starts to cost you money. Yeah. These other ones are free. And they're, all, they're probably more local, and we're going to find a local guy. I don't want to, well, we did have one guy come out from Pennsylvania who's on the road crew now, so. Um, and I'm not sure where he got his. I, I, don't, I don't know. I just know that uh, in the professional world, uh, we've, uh, for our labor pool, we've had a lot of success uh, mm -hmm. with Indeed, and that. The quality of candidate is, is higher. It seems to be a place that people are going and, and looking for jobs as much as they are um, posting them. And um, uh, it, it absolutely comes with a cost, uh, but um, it, it's not uh, it's not outrageous from my perspective. And, and it also has resulted in, in much better pools of candidates. Um, so you do have a good time to Yeah. Candidate. So I I take a take a look at it. It, it it's now completely shifted the way we're posting jobs. I mean, I would do the foreman job, but I wouldn't do the part-time. Agreed. The part-time flow guy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and if you're paying for access, you you can go looking for people uh, and and reach out to them. Um, so without having to post for the for the part-time, yeah, well, you can well, still go I looking learned, for a part-time. One thing I learned from Indeed is that. Um, you have to be careful what you're looking for and what you tell them what you want to see from them yep. and what level of mm -hmm. resume you want to see and that kind of stuff. Because once you ask for more, they ask for more money. And every time they send you something, they send you a bill. So it, it, it may not be a person that you all want to think about. It. And that's part of the problem indeed is that you get a lot of stuff that's not useful. Yeah. But you're paying for it. Yep. But, um, yeah, so sign up and see, see what the parameters are and just kind of limit the, the first scope and see what happens. Yeah. No, Donna complained about it. She tried to use it uh, when she was doing Treasurer and she said people just sort of hit buttons and you get all these resumes that you have to sift through that they shouldn't even be well, applying. Well, and the thing job. is you have to be very specific with Indeed what you want to see in a resume, what their qualifications are. So you have to sort of put in this very limited scope of yeah. what their resume says, and then you only get a few. I mean, when I did it, it was EMTs for the fire department, and not, not a lot of people had all the skill set, and so I didn't see a lot of them. Um, a lot of resumes, but you have to be very specific about what your requirement is and what your parameters are and what your limitations are for what you want to see. Mm -hmm. And then you only see the few that because you've had a very restrictive list of qualifications that you're going to look at instead of throwing everyone that's, you know, highway crew, I have a shovel, great, I'm going to see his resume. No, I don't want to, I don't want to go there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, wow, Toby, thanks. Yeah. Good work. You're welcome. Yeah. It's um, pretty simple for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Pretty easy. All right. We've been doing it 14, 15 years. <laughs> oh. All right. Kari, is that you next? Yes. Kari gave us a memo. He's got four things that he wants to talk to us about. Yeah, so this was sort of a collection of items and just to put it together. Just go through in the order of the memo here. The first one had to do with, well, this is for budgeting purposes and um, 
Senator wanting to know exactly how many full-time employees we should be budgeting for since medical insurance is such a big part of the, of the budget. And so when we total it up, we see four in the um, highway department and four full-timers in the office, which would include full-time treasurer. That's a conservative assumption, not knowing right now what we're actually going to need. to be eight, eight at the most, but I think that's probably the, the number to budget for. Do we actually have to vote on that? Isn't that just something, an administrative thing that we just do? <laughs> certainly could. Yeah. Yeah. So a yeah. sense, sense of the board would probably be fine at this stage. <laughs> I think eight the right number. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, probably the same with this next one about the, what level to fund the health reimbursement accounts. My understanding is we've always put in the max out of pocket until last year when, um, or the current year. It, it, it was just left at the previous year, and I don't know what the story was there, but uh, if we wanted to go back to fully funding it so there are no out-of-pocket um, expenses. I mean, there are out-of-pocket expenses, but this is for deductible and co-pays above the deductible. That would be 2850 5700 And the nice thing about the HRA is that it's the town's money if it's not spent. Right. So I don't know what the utilization rate is, but it's probably below 50%. Um, it so that's just something to put in the budget, I guess. Yes, yeah, yeah. and I think, I think Sandra's been waiting to, for some indicator that that's what you want to do. Uh, may as well put it in, and then we can talk about it at the next meeting. Okay. So why don't you go ahead and put it in. Great, and then just simply adding me to the check signing account. That that is a motion that, that we, that we should okay. have in action there. So would somebody like to make that motion? Uh, so moved. <laughs> Do you understand the motion, Rose? Uh, it's just to add card. The other names. Yeah, it's a signer in our bank account. Yeah. Yes. Yep. To sign checks. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I thought you moved it. <laughs> oh, okay, good. All right. All in favor? All right. All right. Good. All done. And then the last one was I was asked to take a look at the insurance policies. It looked good. I was happy with it. Uh, particularly the flood policy is, is, is good. I guess it's a good thing to be part of a large group of municipalities. Um, but there was a specific question of should we um, increase the level of coverage for uninsured motorists? And when we dug into that, there didn't seem to be any real reason to do that. If one of our employees is injured while driving, they'll be covered by workers' comp. And it's only very specific cases where they see this additional coverage being helpful and it's almost always with the police mm -hmm. and bigger, you know, bigger claims involve attorneys so I so you're recommending we stay with with it and not pay the extra 340 to get the extra coverage yeah. is that Correct. right with everybody yeah. do well, we need a great. motion for that i just yeah. let it be yeah. to increase are you going to increase it or not increase no. it no. Not okay. Not okay. okay good wow Quick. This is so great that you dug into this and just did it. Yeah, that'd be a good yes. example of what I would hope to do for you. So oh, yeah. if you have feedback about that presentation, let me know. Yeah, really no, it's terrific. I have a question. Yeah. Did you guys, did I miss it? Did you talk about the Blue Cross Blue Shield gold plan for this year? Did you talk that budget, oh. that bullet? Or did I miss that discussion? No, they didn't talk about it. No, we only yeah, talked about the, <clears throat> the HRA. Um, so it looks like there's a possible action of either voting to maintain or change the current plan. Yeah, Sandra had mentioned that, but as I read it, well, I guess it would be worth discussing, but as I read it, according to the union contract, we are required to provide the gold plan or an equivalent. An equivalent, yeah. So I don't think we have any flexibility there, um, at least with half of our employees. Right. With, with the road crew. With the road crew, that's right. So that would be so, another, another budget assumption, I would. You know, right. Yeah, think would I think, I think yeah. there's not much choice um, unless we want to do a lot of research and find an equivalent plan. Yeah, and there's only, you know, two, three carriers in Vermont. Mm -hmm. right? You don't have options. 
Okay. So everybody okay with just, we'll put that in at mm -hmm. that rate and we're done. Okay. Thank you, Barbara. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, Kari. Yeah, sure. Um, Shed v. Callis, anything new to report? Not at, Not at the moment. Um, though uh, I will be circulating um, a, a document for everybody to take a look at. Um, and if you have any direct uh, feedback, I'd recommend reaching out to Ann or I. Um, that's, that's about all there is to discuss about it. So. Okay, and we'll find out what it is when the document comes, I guess. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'll circulate it um, right, right after the meeting. Um, so if you can kind of provide any feedback um, by tomorrow, oh. that would be great. By tomorrow. <laughs> okay, Kim. <Can>, no rush. <laughs> <laughs> is this something we can do? Yeah, be, uh, because it's, um, even though we're not an executive session official. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, so session to have any meaningful conversation. I yeah. I don't I don't expect that it will require any uh, substantive conversation. Um, well, maybe what we do is we're sure everybody just hits reply, not reply all. Yeah, so it's not a discussion. That's and correct. Then it's all right. That's okay. correct. Or we'll do know, it that pick, way. Up, pick up the phone if you have any questions about it. But yeah. I, I, there's no surprises there. So okay. Uh, and we're waiting to hear um, back. There was a. Uh, Status, today. Uh, status meeting today uh, with the uh, with the judge, um, and we're just waiting to kind of hear back what the what the summary was from that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Question. I'm not sure I know what you want the minutes to reflect. I didn't uh, really hear what you were. Uh, talking we'll about. pass around a document. So be a, Share a document for review and from who? From from me. From you? Yep. Oh, okay. Jordan so. is going to send a document. He can't really tell us what it is right now because it's confidential information. But he's going to share it with the select board members, and we are going to each give him our feedback individually so that we're not having a meeting. Got it. Okay. Jamie, you have some things to tell I us. I have some things. Um, at the last meeting, I talked about a potential design change for the dam, which would save us a bunch of money um, that sort of changed the style of dam from an upstream wall to a downstream buttress similar to what's there now and a secondary spillway through a piping system. Um, that's still a possible idea, but the engineers have come up with another possible idea um, that could save us a similar amount of money. So today I received, and I put in the board folder, I don't know if anyone's got this. Is it a, rather than a pipe, is it just like a fountain that like shoots? <laughs> <laughs> it's community volunteers with squirt <laughs> So, so today we received the official recommendation from DNK that we reject both bids that we received um, on September 26th. And the reason for rejecting the bids is that they were substantially over our budget. Um, and we can't go with those particular plans and contractors and those bids specifically. Um, once, so I have a, a motion ready that we'll, we'll get to in a bit, but that will allow us to have conversation um, with, the, there's a, one of the bidders has come to us with some ideas um, that, that the engineers really like that could save us a bunch of money. Um, and so we will go into um, a, a process, a sort of a value added engineering process, they call it, um, where they say, hey, we can't do what you want to do for the amount you have, but we can do the same, achieve the same goal for a project within your budget if we engineer it this way. Um, and so then we'll be able to you know, 
have the engineers draw up those designs and go through DM safety and um, Michael of DMK feels optimistic that we'll be able to put together a plan um, that will come within budget or close to budget um, and be approved by all parties. And we don't have to read in, and what do you call it? There was a term. It's the, the value added engineering. Mm -hmm. um, right, so I spoke uh, with our attorney today um, who confirmed what DNK said, which is we've been through the bid process, we've gotten the interest that we're going to get, it's met the, the intent of the town procurement policy, um, and that once we reject the bids, um, we're free to have conversations uh, with a contractor to create a, a plan and a path forward uh, without going through another public bid process. Hmm. Is there a question coming with that, uh, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. sign? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, I just want to make sure I'm clear. I guess so we're, we're rejecting uh, the bids uh, as they stand, but we're not we're not rebidding, um, but I imagine after we have the two, you know, we have the more open dialogue, um, or I, I would assume that we would have to put any finalized plan back out to each of them so that they can modify respectively or that has been true. That's true as long as the bids are open. Once we reject the bids, they each have ample opportunity to bring us their ideas, but we're not required or actually allowed to, like if one of them has an idea and it's their plans, we can't then give their plans to somebody else and ask them to do it cheaper. They're actually contributing in theory to the design, this new design. Exactly. And adding value. As well. Exactly. And, and Jamie did run this by Thomas Mulroney, mm -hmm. yeah. who said that it's considered a value added project and that's fine. We yeah. are, it's okay. Uh, and are there like added costs associated with the re redesign or the re? Are, are, is it likely that there are going to be conversations with both contractors? Probably not. Probably just the one who has plans and, um, mm -hmm. yeah. It would be. <laughs> you had a question? I think largely what Jordan was driving at. So mm -hmm. we would dismiss the two, but you would like to go with one or are we committing to a person, company? Not yet, but by, by rejecting bids, uh, we're free to have conversations with either of them. And there's one in particular who has come to us with ideas. And so we'll, we'll hash those ideas out and okay. see. And but those ideas, would they have to go back to this whole exhausting, no. <laughs> never ending? <laughs> Right, that's what we're being told is they wouldn't have to go back through that whole process. Is that what and, you're saying? And it's not a substantial enough change that um, Dam Safety or SHPO or any of the people who have approved the permits. The historical people? Yeah. It's and all that gonna, whole, like every rock had to be put exactly. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And now no, they, cool. never actually, they never actually did say we had to do that. Oh, okay. We, we just survived. We're afraid that they might. Uh, okay. See, I thought that was. <laughs> Got it. Um, and so, assuming we take this path, then theoretically, conversations will start quickly, and um, it won't take them long to engineer. You know, they have to calculate changes in volume of concrete and whatnot. But um, we should be able to move through the design stuff pretty quickly and um, potentially be 
looking at uh, contracts in, by the end of the year. Okay. Other questions? Is Anything the fountain else? idea completely out? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jamie, would you like we'll to... call it the callous geyser. <laughs> Yes. Would you like to read your motion for Rose? Oh, yes. <laughs> and I can send it to Rose as well. Oh, maybe oh that's, easier. that's even better. <laughs> um, but it's, uh, I would make a motion that we accept uh, Du Bois and King's recommendation that we reject both bids received for the dam reconstruction project because the bids came in significantly over budget um, and that we uh, begin conversations uh, with a contractor who has ideas for a value-added engineering uh, changes to the design. We being the Curtis Pond Association. Yes. The well, town. we primarily being me and Michael from Du Bois and King. Okay. Okay. But maybe what I'm saying is Clarifying there who we, we is, clarifying your motion right. who we is. We would be myself on behalf of the town okay. and the CPA, mm -hmm. um, along with the engineers and the contractor. All right, is that clear, everybody? Yes. And you'll send it to me. You'll type it and sure. send it again. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Is, uh, would somebody like to make, uh, you made a motion. Would somebody like to second it? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Anne, you comfortable with this? Yeah. Okay. I just, you looked. I don't know. No, no, it's intensive. It's, it's <laughs> late. Okay. <laughs> Got it. I feel the same way. Okay. okay. It's All just very exhausting, and I just like, mm, is it going to be that easy? I just. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> um, Jordan, we got anything on IT? Uh, no. Well, I guess tonight we had a pretty good meeting. Um, Tegan and I met with RB Tech um, to kind of talk about uh, future stuff now that uh, we've got super jazzy fast uh, internet. Um, uh, we covered a, a lot of ground. Um, uh, I think the big question mark uh, was uh, relative to uh, the server um, setup. Right now we have like an on-premise server setup um, that is a little bit more uh, capital intensive uh, because you actually have the equipment on premises and uh, you have to back it up in a very particular way and you have to make a plan for replacing it. Um, the alternative would to have a more virtual server but that comes with uh, its own uh, its own costs uh, relative to access and licensing of software to facilitate uh, keeping stuff in the cloud, um, and um, it's not exactly a wash, but they're pretty comparable and relative to the needs of the town and our current investment in infrastructure. The recommendation was to kind of stay the course on the on the physical stuff because we have kind of a nice backup setup that's already um, uh, established. Um, so no significant change there. Uh, we, I guess, uh, Tegan's going to be working on making sure that everybody has the remote access that they need uh, relative to VPN and just making sure that that still um, uh, works. Uh, the other kind of line of dialogue was relative to um, uh, the Vemers, no, not Vemers, that, uh, uh, what's the yeah. Airsoft, Nimric. Um, <laughs> right. Um, so right now we're we're kind of stuck with some limitations on the Nemeric system um, and how kind of flexible we can be on mm -hmm. moving stuff to the cloud um, mm -hmm. relative to remote access and the server. I think. They're never we're never going down the software base, so we have to yeah. put all the software on our computers and use it that way. Some people use it cloud based online. Some other towns do. Not a lot of towns do because not a lot of towns have good internet. Like it's just mm -hmm. it's not. But it's a thing that we're we're looking at. And if we had a, like if Kari and I were both going to be working from home half the week 
or our new treasurer was, we might have to think more about it. Right now, what we have, I think, works fine. I don't see a big reason to change at this point, but Kari and I will keep keeping an eye on it, and I'm sure our new treasurer, when we have one, will have input of some kind. And then I guess the last bit, which is a little uh, less substantial but more immediate, um, was we kind of pushed them to uh, help facilitate the full utilization of the um, uh, Microsoft suite that we have and, and help us uh, get more familiar with how to utilize the file sharing stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, right now, the impediment uh, in addition to the volunteer time that would be involved in trying to get that organized is is not really we, we've been have we've had a lot of ambiguity i think about like whose roles are what and how they're going to interact with different bodies um and now that we've got kari on board and and some of that is uh coming into clearer view hopefully <laughs> um uh I think we can have more educated conversations about like how we want different folks to access different um, applications and who we want governing that access. Um, so we're basically just going to set aside time to hold them accountable for helping us make that transition kind of complete. Um, There's and, lots of cool stuff in there that we could be using and we yeah. just either don't know how to use it or haven't taken the time to set it up and get it started. Yeah. yeah. So finding some time, maybe after budget time yeah. next year. Yeah. yeah. Progress. Yeah. yeah. Incredible. Um, I guess if anybody else has any other kind of pressing IT needs, then let Tegan know for sure. Or Carmen. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, yeah. 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 Every day. So he gave me things, and I went into the supply room, and I pulled out half the things he needed. So we were Amazing. waiting that for him. I saved it. It's like when my mom used to go to Belk, and she's like, I saved $100. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, I, w I will say, like, I think there's some real opportunities with with making documents available in more transparent ways and more organized ways, um, mm -hmm. and revision controls and that sort of thing. And so that that's kind of something I've been thinking about over the last couple of weeks since that conversation. Um, um, now that we have kind of faster, faster internet access, and we can we can maybe facilitate some some of that stuff, which is which is exciting. And it'd be nice to see if we can't like push some of that to the website. Um, hmm. I think there's a whole another conversation to be had around around the website, which is you know maybe IT twenty twenty four. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, right. Objectives, but yeah. uh, it, it needs right. a little it, it needs some yeah. massaging for sure. It does. Some of it's I, just it's not easy to change certain things on yeah. there. It's like from a backside of things perspective, it's not easy to put documents exactly where you want them. No, and I think that's a platform yeah. thing. So I yeah, think we're going to have to look, look at it pretty. It is, but there's probably workarounds, right? With links I'm, to I'm trying to figure it out. No, it's. I've, I've looked into it a little bit further, and I know Tegan has as well. And, and there are kind of workarounds, but what in my experience with with websites like that, like you're you're just one workaround away from breaking a couple of other things, and mm -hmm. and a lot of those workarounds aren't scalable. Um, and and I think you know if we're talking about access to like mapping resources or you know other things there are there are other platforms that are just easier on the back end to manage and yeah. i think we have to be really mindful of of how easy that stuff is uh to to manage as we're trying to do more with more robust stuff and fewer people um it's it's easy to to kind of overlook it um and i see the platform of the the website being hugely limiting. Yes, I fully agree. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Okay. Right, thank you. Sure. Um, so Tegan uh, has asked if she could, and I think it's a great idea, if she could make a report to us every once in a while. So I'm just going to put it on as a regular thing. I don't have a whole lot to sign because I haven't been in the office for most of the last two weeks. <laughs> And so my report is that it's really hard to do my job if I'm not in there for two entire weeks. Yeah. There's a lot of backup. Um, I missed most of Kari's new time 
being there, I, but it looks like everything is great. I came back to an office that's still standing in a great shape, so that's good. <laughs> um, I know Barbara has been working really hard to make sure tax checks are processed as quickly as we get them because she's got stacks of them around the office now since we're about to hit the deadline. So that's kind of been <coughs> the guiding guiding situation is people coming in with tax checks and processing tax checks. And so that's what's happening Can around the office. We do remote deposit for that stuff at all? We don't. I don't know that we could. We haven't talked to the bank about it. It's not really my jurisdiction. So what, what, what was the question? Uh, remote deposit. So... It might be a conversation with the next treasurer, I would say. Because like, now it's the 13th of November. Yeah, right. that's fair. <laughs> Uh, we do have uh, John McCullough and I are going to talk with Tim Maker on Wednesday about cooling the town office, some options for cooling it, so keeping the server in the vault at acceptable temperatures. Um, so that's that's going on too. Idea. Okay. Thank you. And Kari, you may already have made your report. Do you have more you would like to? Well, see? just the one thing is, um, I'll make it really quick. Is that. Uh, Big part of my focus has been learning this job, and there is a lot. This is kind of surprising to me how much there is. And so I um, put together this draft plan of how I'm going to learn my job. And so it's in there if you have any feedback or any questions, and, and went through it and gave me quite a bit of feedback. But um, I, I would welcome any suggestions you have about how to go about it. But it's mostly you know, talking with people and then breaking down those job uh, description responsibilities into what, what are these components and what are the resources that are available. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Karen. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you're, you seem to be coming up to speed pretty fast, yeah. so there's a, it's a lot. I have a Thanks. question. Yeah. Is Singleton Road open? Yes. No. It is? Yeah. Right. Thank you. I'm going to go home that way. <laughs> <laughs> I did, and the guys went and did some more work on it last week because I did not feel yeah. that. How Jay Hutchins it? left it quite like he wanted it. How, so. how long has it been open? Because I'm, I'm one. The reason I'm asking, I'm wondering, is it too late to post it to front porch forms? Should we post it to front porch forms? Because we get calls at the office. People asking us all the time. Oh, oh, I, oh, people have been driving on it. It's been open for like a week. Sorry about that. That's okay. Okay, I think. Yeah, I mean, it, it would be worth posting it as part of a, you know, celebration. Yay, yeah, our final giant right. hole is filled. More of the month of thankfulness. So, so, would you want to do it as our outgoing road commissioner and getting it done, or would, do you want to do, post it as our new town administrator? Well, it's, you post it, it's fine. I, yeah, I think. I think most, at least the people in the area, I think, are in the know, but I think posting it to the board is good. Who's going to write the post? Yeah, who? who oh, who's going to write the post? Sure. Okay. Come on. Yeah, that would be great. Because we do, people are going to take on more. Right? Yeah. 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 We have not heard. <laughs> was that the last one? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Um, and I've scheduled um, each of the three candidates to come in at 6, 6.30, and 7, and we'll give each of them half an hour. Oh, and I would like to invite Kari to, to join us, if you're able, Kari, and I'm willing. Bill. Is that all right with everybody? I think that'd when be great. That? Yeah. yeah. And would, would all of you think about what questions you might like to ask these candidates? And then we'll probably have a, a discussion afterwards about, what, about it. Okay. All right. Anything else tonight? Okay. Then this meeting is continued until uh, 6 o'clock tomorrow. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.